Uh, I can't right. wait to play some D&D. Who wants to give me yes. the fucking mm -hmm. recap? Sounds like oh, I got it. I got it. You got it? it. All right, let me hear it. I got it. I got it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. We went over prestige classes in equipment. Arcadum Gaslight gatekeeped us from being Grave Lords, so Super Sag. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, that's fine. No, go ahead. Get it all uh, out now. Uh, yeah, and you can just watch the VOD for us discussing <laughs> no. equipment and fucking prestige classes. Like, just, I, watch I VOD, just watch the VOD, Just watch the VOD. That's it. What have, what have I done? <sighs> wow. <laughs> I mean, do you want me to go in detail what all we went over? In Take your fucking classes? inspiration, you clap, clap, piece clap, of shit. Clap, 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 clap. How about that? Man, the matron of fate is wow. grumpy today. <laughs> I wonder why. You and my dad have the same opinion of me. That's crazy. Mm, death <laughs> is musical <laughs> <No>. today. <laughs> All right, so let's pick up on what's happening. So, uh, over the course of you staying at the um, Abbey, there's going to be a couple of characters that will be introduced as the <clears throat> presence of Metheria increases and the Inquisition prepares uh, not only for the upcoming battle, but starts to provide resources and other such of uh, another such support <clears throat> support structures uh, for all of you. So give me just a second to remember how to do math. And I believe you were also still one momenting. Let's begin. I know. I know. One? I, I I know. I know. I'm aware. I know. Okay. I can't see anything. Good. Don't let him see. <laughs> Four. Ah, ah, ah. Four. Five. Ah, but, ah, uh, ah. I, I also had some, uh, some other prestige class questions. It, I don't know. Would you want to do more of that now or later? Uh, yeah. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I kind of like it here. What the Metharians are up to, but. Go ahead and ask your question. That's fine. Okay. Um. Would I be able to switch up the advanced fighting style for Tower of Shielded Light, or am I locked to that one because that was a Metharian blessing? You can you can train out of it, but you can't get it again until you reget the blessing. So okay, that's that's fine. Up to you. Um, and then for the penitent one, whenever you get crit and take the the crit damage. Um, the damage is converted to temporary HP. You do not take the damage first and then gain the temporary HP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, but it's... I'm making sure, like, if I get hit for 40, I take the 40 and then get 20 temp HP. So it works like this. I walk up to you. You have 9 yeah. AR left over from all your shit, right? Let's just yeah. say. I deal 30 damage to you, okay? Uh -huh. That means 21 damage is dealt to your hit point pool. So yep. instead of 21 damage being dealt to your hit point pool, you take 10 damage to your hit point pool, and you gain 10 temporary hit points. Cool. All at once. All at cool. the same time. Cool. So I pretty much negate the crit on me. Yes. Yes. That's... I was explaining yes, that's, that's... Yes, that's... <laughs> I'm making sure... I'm gonna fucking... Sure I was understanding I'm gonna shit properly. myself. Yes, that is how it... That's how it works. Okay. That's why it's good. That's why yes, that it's is good. very good. It essentially makes you immune to crits, at least while you have temp HP. Or when I don't have temp HP. Well, so the I so the, the weakness of it is is if a small damage source critically hits you, gives you temp HP, or if you gain temp HP from another source, and then you get big critted, because then the big yeah. crit does full effect. Can't be negated. Yeah. So it's it's the trade-off. That's where the tactical part comes in. Mm -hmm. But anyway, <clears throat> that being said, that's how it works. All right, cool. That that's that. Those were my only two big prestige class questions, and I I am ready to lock in my choice now. Well, that's all well and good. 
but we don't actually do that until we play again, so. Yeah. Okay. So once again, not necessary to do that right now. You have several weeks to change your mind. But Dad, I want to go out on my own. <laughs> I've got the whole no, world. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I have a prestige question, kind of, sorta. All right, lay it on me. If I decided to not go revenge and go inquisitor instead, um, would the professional trait for the poisoner's kit allow me to use poisons? as a different sort of action, or would they still take a full action to apply in combat sort of thing? It's not a very well-formulated question, I'm sorry. Uh, so quick access on professional states that you may use your kit at any time as a triggered action on your turn. You may not use it once per turn. So for poisoners, you would use it as a triggered action, which costs no other form of action economy. I'm not entirely sure I understand what a triggered action so, is. So a, tri a triggered action is a free action that requires a trigger. In this case, you get to trigger at any time. It's one of the few times in which you can do that. It just happens. It just happens. So it's a free action. So it doesn't cost you an action, a bonus action, none of that stuff. The only stipulation is that obviously it has to be uh, on your turn. That's the only stipulation. Once. And only once per your turn. So, So the idea is that you're fighting. It's your turn. You have professional with poisoner's kit. As a free action, you get to poison your weapon, which is the, you know, most efficient use of that action economy. So, oh, it's very that good. Works. And that works for loading a hollowed weapon with poisons as well. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm. Okay, and um, kind of like spinning off of that, the practitioner's bracers that I have that allow me to take potions as a bonus action, would they also work like an apothecary act where I can feed other teammates potions, or is it just for me? That's only for you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no. Eh? No. No, wait, no, that's only for you. Okay. <laughs> I was checking. The head. roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> yes. No, little, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Uh, okay, we'll do it live. Uh. I'll write it myself. <laughs> okay, we'll do it live. I'm starting this shit. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I have one. Lay it uh, on me. For uh, rapturous belief, does that is that uh, affected at all during clashes? Like, if say if I want to clash somebody and they're affected by voice of guidance, does rapturous belief like? take effect so i just become immune during the clash no okay. clashes ignore all other game mechanics i figured just wanted to ask i was like that's the case level 10 you clash <laughs> that would be broken <laughs> <laughs> that's why i wanted to ask i was like I'm just that, gonna that would clash be him. highly broken all right is that it um for prestige level stuff yeah all right then mm -hmm. yeah. Are there any other mechanics questions before we move on to this next bit here? Uh, yes. Is there any mm -hmm. item that, like, fist wraps or something that I can use that will augment my unarmed strikes with, like, properties and stuff? Yes, but you can't afford it. Okay. Just wanted to be sure. Okay. Unless, unless we pulled all our money. Nah, we're not doing oh, that. Uh, we'll never take, also, we'll never take this one's for Reavy specifically. Are we getting the sensor med kit, or are you using your flail for the sensor stuff? Using the remember. flail. Okay, so I'm gonna edit that real quick. I'm gonna have a sensor Thank you. priest kit, so we'll have double the sensors, folks. It'll be good. Whoa. I wanted to ask how long it has been since the original Dark Sermon Squad got together, and what season we're in as far as the timeline, because I've lost it at a couple points. It was about to be... Oh, let's see, I knew this. Let me do my math. Winter is coming, I know that. Uh, actually, I think we're about to be in summer? No. It's, it's, no. No. You're, you're in autumn. Um, everyone's yeah. going to be oh. in winter at the start of the next 
set. And so that way everybody's reset to the same thing anyway. Uh, as for how much time has actually passed, it has been eight months. Give or take a few days. Okay. Nice. I think if year. I remember correctly, they're preparing for the winter solstice, which is all the mm -hmm. heretical yeah, that's stuff right. that's happening. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. stupid. Don't pay attention to me. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. The damn pagans. <laughs> Trying to bring Halloween about? <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Can't have Halloween in my Corvanus. <laughs> Get that out of here. No, that's really evil. weans my hallow. <laughs> I'm gonna ween. I'm gonna hallow your ween. All right, are we ready? Ding. Yep. Yeah. Mm. All righty then. Inquisitor cast will approach. I will give a short nod to each of you, and then we'll state. We've begun to establish a presence in the city. But before we can begin our mission, we have a few other things to go over. Most notably, you will have to finish your training. The church has elected to use outlier sources to help expedite this process. We have brought in a few specialists. They have agreed to not only help us with your training, but to assist the church directly. Please note that some of them might be a bit unseemly, but we have signed contracts with each of them. As long as they do not perform any heretical acts or anything unbecoming of a Metharian, they are to be tolerated. Understood. Very well. Hmm. Works for me. Nods. The Inquisitor will return the nod. Good. Once you have finished introducing yourselves, and laying out your plans for your training, return to me. I have a mission update, as Sir Ponko has returned recently from his trip to gather up his caravan. We are now going to be preparing for what is to come in earnest. You'll meet these individuals out in the training yard. They await you now. The Inquisitor will take a seat and dismiss you. I say... Thank you, Inquisitor. Very well. Come on, Gideon. Let me help you up. Did... Should be me helping you up. You're the ah. blind one, Thorn. Wait. Thanks. To wait for my buddies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pardon me. You guys always <laughs> walk into Ginny. Oh, I forgot. You're so small. I think we need to assemble for. Oh, there's one. Hold up. New area. Oh, Farron. Hmm? We assemble around the captain. <laughs> Do we? Yes. God. Do you? All right, here. Ah, I'll, I'll move no. you back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stop stepping on me. Everyone stop <laughs> stepping on me. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit, Perhaps dude. Perhaps don't get underfoot. Don't worry, guys. I think they can handle this. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Or not. Or the... The... Okay, stop, stop. It's killing me. It's <laughs> killing me. Just stop. Just... I was wondering where y'all were going. Just cease, I'm coming. Just cease moving. I'll do it myself. Jesus Christ. Oh, Alright, there you go. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, through the wall. We the wall. Oh, like Skyrim. I'm this close to just giving SE permission over all of your tokens so you just move everybody yourself. <laughs> yeah, do good. it. Do it. Mind control. <laughs> Mind control. Assuming direct control. Assuming direct control. Okay, and... Alrighty. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here I go killing again. Gotta find a good, that's a good tune. A good tune, a good tune. Let's see. Oh, I know we one. all lift is good. Ah, uh, that's better. Shopping. Okay. <laughs> it could be the shock theme if I can help you with it again. <laughs> it's gonna be a montage. Montage. Mm. Ooh. <clears throat> all right. 
There we go. Alrighty. As you enter, you can see that there are quite a few individuals kind of seated around. Uh, there is one of them that is excitingly talking to the rest. As you walk up on this scene. Alright, you will see the following characters. First, you see this individual. What? Oh! Uh. I know him. Mm -hmm. The man, the myth, the legend. You see this individual. Cot Sterling. <laughs> I'm the hero of Kavach. <laughs> you see this individual. Oh, ninja. Nervous. Just real quick on the side. That's probably one of my favorite designs you've done so far, Waymaker. Oh, oh. That guy right there. Thanks, that, man. That guy's a goddamn champion. Uh, oh, I'm a fucking fan. There's this oh, lady. And you see this guy. As you approach, you will see that a man bearing the symbology of the Shield of Metheria is currently giving a rousing speech. Remember, dear friends, that together, in Metheria's light, we may lead this entire world out of darkness. And I know that you may not hold Metheria in your heart as others have, and indeed you may walk your own paths, but you need not fear, for even in this moment, as you walk separate paths from the church, that you are still in service to the light. It is my very enormous pleasure to meet you, and indeed, my holy duty to guide you. Shield Captain Rodacares, at your service, as he turns around, with a bit of dramatic flair. Very oh, nicely done, friends. brother. Yes, pleased to meet you. Oh, come forth, come forth. And all of you as well, you're being you're being so moody. The others will approach ah. despite themselves. We'll give Rhoda a good pat on the shoulder. Now all then, right. <clears throat> I am Rhoda, as as was stated. Uh, this is I'll introduce myself, if it's all the same to you. Oh oh of course, sorry, I get I get a little excitable. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I am Lady Sally Ride. Guildmaster of the Black Park Mercenary Company. I have been brought on board to see to your martial training and your teamwork acumen. A pleasure. Mm. Not. Alright, insight check. Oh. Ah. I love all of y'all. The sound of crispy no insights. <laughs> All right. I well, kick a rock on the ground. I don't pay attention. You kicked Rick, though. Poor Rick. Ah, rock. Kill Rick. him. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, the ant that I see on the ground. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck that guy. Anyway, um, with your insight checks, you're able to tell that Sally gives you the idea of a the truest form of mercenary. She is here because she has been paid to do a job. She will see that job done efficiently. And then she will leave. She does not like any of you. She also doesn't hate any of you. This is purely work for her. The next one that'll walk up will give a little bit of a wave, and then he'll just kind of say, uh, My name's Alex. I'm uh, I'm here to make sure that you don't uh, lose your way in Aldefifian culture, I guess. And uh, to help you spot bandits. Things like that. Just to make sure you don't get caught off guard, eh? Insight check. Mm. Nod. <laughs> Guinea and Mythos. Alex is incredibly nervous and is not good at talking to people. That much is very clear, as he does not make prolonged eye contact. He's also a half-elf. 
feel even very called out here, Arcadum. I don't appreciate it. There are other people with the name Alex. Alex. I know! Anyway, the next one who will approach is this heavily cloaked individual who will give a sort of a... Sort of a, like a... Oh, God. A, a hand-clasped bow. And then will state, I am in Evo. I am here to um, assist you with those of you that wish to use shadows as your ally. And to train you in the skills needed to infiltrate our current enemy's strongholds. Insight checks for Inevo. I would choose not to insight. Okay. With those insights, you sense that Anivo seems to be very stoic. It is difficult to tell what they are looking for, how happy they are to be here, and whether or not they can be trusted. At the very least, Inevo's suspicious nature is because they too are suspicious of you. Perhaps in that line of work, such a thing is to be expected. And then this guy. Uh, hey there, uh, Martis Chevalier at your service. Um, I'm here to teach you about the laws of Aldefife. And to help you, uh, accomplish your mission without breaking any. And also, on how to apprehend people without killing them. Since apparently that's a thing that needs to be taught. Insight check. Fair, and you get the sense that Martis is very bored. Hmm. And now that everybody has finished their introductions... Oh! Oh! Oh, boy! So, <clears throat> if I may, he says without actually waiting for a response, we have been entrusted by the glorious Inquisition of Mytheria to see to your training and your preparations... Your enemy, our enemy, lies to the east. The machinations of such death, such evil creatures. Oh, if only I wasn't already on orders, I would join and stand beside you. But I am, I am needed to the north. That's a shame. I would have liked to have you along, Shield Captain Rhoda. Thank you for doing as you can. I'm sure your job ahead in the North will prove just as good as ours here. Well, I will admit I'm a little nervous. It's the first solo mission I've been given, and many have laughed at me about it. They think that there's nothing to be gained from exploring an old fortress. But I intend to prove them wrong. I've already taken the liberty of preparing my own squad to go with me. Although, to be honest, I haven't met them yet. But I'm sure Metharia will give me strong, dependable people. By the light. I pray that you will, brother. May her light guide you. Thank you. But until then, we have some teaching to do. So if any of you require any uh, training in the bardic or perhaps the divine arts, or any magical studying of any kind to avoid apostasy, you may, of course, consult with me. Which is, that's that's the one I do. That's the one, that's why I'm here. Mm. Everyone else kind of looks at him. <laughs> Alright, and with that, each of the, um... Trainers will kind of separate to their different spaces. And you guys can do whatever you want. Hmm. 
you have an allocation in mind, Captain? Mm, none for now, but I do believe that everyone should at least take the time to speak to Master Alex and Master Martis. Legality and culture are things that cannot be ignored, but as for um, each of our professions, I'd say anywhere that suits you best. Very well. I myself am most likely going to start with Master Newt, I believe. Unless... Mm. No, it seems Mythos is approaching on his own. Very well. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Uh, Ginny, as you approach Lady Ride, she will look down and will say, Can I help you, Halfling? You seem the most apt in the um, ways of war and battle, and I'm looking to improve mine. Well, I could certainly do that. I'm responsible for bringing the Black Bart Mercenary Company out of obscure obscurity into something that's worth a damn, I suppose. We've just finished a recent campaign to the south, clearing out the silver stones of troglodytes. My men have been sent ahead of me back to Flanderton. And I am very much looking forward to returning. But... Mytheria needs a sword arm, or at least one to teach her soldiers, how to wield it. I find... Yes. How often do our soldiers needed in Flanderton? I... It's very urban, is it not? Every civilized place needs soldiers. The law is only as strong as the sword that wields it. Or wait, no, it's... It's arm that wields the sword that... Or is it... Oh, it doesn't matter. Poetry was never my strong suit. The point is, if you want to keep things in line, then you have to be willing to do it. Yourself. So, here we are. Flanderton may not have a standing army, but it still needs order, just like anywhere else. Okay. Now, you've approached me, I presume, because you know how to use that spear. I do. Good. We shall see. I've always found the direct approach to be best when it comes to training. She'll walk past you out onto the field. Oh, man. All right, make me some martial checks, big guy. All right. Let me equip some things. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see here. Do, do, do. Ah, yes. Marshall checks. That thing I'm so good at. <clears throat> All right. Well, as you study uh, Lady Ride, she has the following armaments. You can see that she has a battle banner across her back, but she actually takes that off and plants it into the ground behind her. And then you will see that she has a very curious setup with her gear. You will see that she wears a long sword at her hip, but hidden within the plates of her armor are several daggers, as if they are meant to be thrown. Do you throw your daggers often in, in combat? Of course. Like it is my preferred fighting style. A surprised ranged attack will catch an enemy unawares, and then a simple follow-up after that. So you use the daggers to close the gap? Indeed, and also to dual wield when necessary. Hmm. I see. I personally find that finding the daggers just into the right divot of the armor once they've been worn down is the appropriate function. That is why I focus so heavily upon the destruction of my enemy's armor and shields. And it is also where Linebreaker comes in handy. And she'll tap her, uh, her sword at her side. Hmm, so once you've got their armor down, you rely on the cutting. 
Indeed. Makes sense to me. Personally, I'm more of a fan of impaling my enemy as many times as possible. Yes, of course. But I'm not here just to teach you how to fight, but rather how to fight as a team. For the strongest sword as those is not one wielded, it's not by its... Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes, it does. Once the others have finished, I shall command you as a group. But for now, let's see if you know how to use that spear. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You approach. Oh, good boy, Rhoda. Oh, hello, friend. Hello, Captain. Oh, please, there's no need for more formalities. You may simply call me Rhoda. I've always found the use of rank to be, well, unnecessary, but I suppose it is in a combat sense, but oh, no, I'm rambling. Oh, you're an orc! Oh, orcs are so beloved! The first line of defense against demon kind. Oh, you must have many stories to tell. I do, I do indeed. I have many times from my battles in the waste. Uh, I came to talk to you because uh, I am a paladin. And I wish to uh, learn more healing spells to help my team. Oh, I can certainly help you with that. Metharia's blessings are hidden in the cosmos of, well, rampant apostasy, but I can help you find your way. Now it's time for my favorite part, when you first meet someone who is blessed with magic that is not apostatic. Please hold my hand, brother. Uh, okay. I'll stretch his hand <laughs> and hold it. Uh, You'll both start to shine with a bright light. Do you feel it, brother? The power of Metharia's light is within you. Side I am. Yes, I feel it flowing through me. This is fantastic. Oh, we're going to learn so many things we are. All right, he will pull out a book, start teaching you spells. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh... <clears throat> As Mythos approaches. Hey. Hello, Mr. Martis. Hey. You are the one that said you were the expert in the laws of this region, correct? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Well, if it's not too much of a burden, I would like you to go over these with you. I'm well, a very studious individual. Uh, uh, I'd like to learn as much as I can before this mission ensues. So the Aldefifians, um, they kind of follow the, the old laws. So there's a lot of this uh, green faith in there. Most notably, uh, care for your neighbor, help the wayward traveler, basic decency. Although they... Um, there's nothing they hate more than someone who, uh, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Providing shelter to those in need, being a good guest, these are the, pretty much the, the highest tenets, really. Hmm. And it is considered the highest sacrilege to betray the trust of your host. Uh, in addition Some hospitality to hospitality and kindness. Yeah, but the reason I'm telling you Metharians is that if you go into somebody's house, they help you and then you, like, arrest them or kill them, that's not going to sit well with anybody. It doesn't matter how right you are. Once you've accepted um, a guest's invitation to enter their home and they provide succor to you, and as long as they have not put you in harm's way, then you're not allowed to just act as you will, regardless of what the goddess might tell you. That is, of course, at least, if you want to um, be successful in your endeavor. Another thing to keep in mind, 
is that Metharia's reach is undependable here. Meaning that those that would follow her will and those that would report crime and those that would turn in their apostate brethren are all very low. You won't be able to approach this like a barbarian with a club. You're going to have to find very subtle ways to get these people to lead you to what they want. Or to what you want, rather. Obviously, he just looks up as he says that. <laughs> obviously, you have the basic rules of don't steal or, you know, eat, eat people, things like that. Uh, one peculiar law in, in Alda Fife that I've always found kind of strange is that although they do not... Well, I don't really know how to explain that. It's... They have strange marriage customs. Yeah. How so? Well, normally when two people get married, they um, combine houses, they make their pledge to Metheria. How do five fiends get married at the center of this large tree in the middle of the city? And apparently it's, uh, it's a tradition that's, well, so demanding that people actually travel a far distance across the swamplands in order to do so. Oh, speaking of which, while we're on the subject of that, since Alda Fife has no ruler, that, at least until the Barrow King rose out of his grave, I guess, mostly the rules are based off of which city that you're in. And when you're on the outside, you want to follow the rule of the green. But make no mistake that even the creatures that are bound by the green, like hags, still have the capacity for great evil and deception despite these limitations. So keep in mind that when you're in the swamp, the old faith and their rules and tenets, as blasphemous as they might seem, they're the only semblance of civilization that you're going to have. That would have been useful information for something we ran into a while ago, but I thank you for this. But other than the giant tree, what is so peculiar about their marriage ceremonies? Is it just because it happens in the tree? Uh, what's peculiar is that and also the day. They have it every midday. Ah. Wednesday. Out of character. That is the holy day of Metheria, right? Yes. Well, that is the most holiest of days, so it's understandable. Yeah, so maybe that's something you could follow up on. But anyway, I think that should do. Well, thank you very much for this kindness. I'll be sure to be diligent and put this into practice as best I can and keep my comrades in tow. He'll give a nod. All right, the two of you approach. And oh. I'll put my weapons away, you know, hands open, to try and ease the nervous Alex. Hello, Alex Shale. Uh, hey. Could you tell us more on the curiosities of Alda Five culture? Well, I don't really know much about that, I guess. But I do know how the bandits run and what kind of criminals that you can expect to encounter. I know because I've dealt with them myself. Purely as a legitimate businessman, of course. He'll look around just suspiciously. But, um, anyway. So. Since the Foul Lands don't really have a, a leader that's recognized and the three kings are split three ways... You're going to find a lot of bandit activity here and also in Aldefife. There's all sorts of bandits that are trying to make their own way out. Some have conquered the old fortresses, and some of them are getting pretty powerful. There's the Crown Thieves, which operate in both the Three Kings and Aldefife, or the Fallow Lands, I should say. Uh, but as far as they go, they're the, they're the least troublesome lot 
At least they're pretty respectful when it comes down to things. The others are the the Blaze Bandits, a bunch of fire eaters and fire wielders, apostasy all over the place. Uh, the others are the Gum House, Gum Gum House, Gumhausen, something like that. They're a bunch of well, they look like they wear alligator skins. Uh, but the worst of the worst is probably, um, well, the Crimson Tears. Supposedly their leader was an ex-weeping blade that escaped the Duke of Isola and has now grown so powerful that the Duke has deemed it unworthy to finish him off. So, I think those are the ones you need to look out for. And do you believe that these will be possibly present in um in dark lake where we're operating absolutely mm -hmm. did you get um, all those names ready to go over them they're kind of important i uh, got the names i'm trying to blaze bandits gum hose and crimson tear yes just wanted to make sure those are important. You should put those in your notes channel. Mm -hmm. Then how do, do you interact with them or such? You had previous experience? Yeah, well, I used to work for almost all of them. Oh. I said used to. I serve Metharia now. I'm uh, changed or whatever. The point is, I know what I'm talking about. You're going to encounter them. In fact, I dare say that they probably got their fingers deep in Dark Lake already. I mean, that used to be Brewston's territory, but I'm pretty sure that Dawn's been killed. I think it's Crimson already, Tear territory now. We already ran into the uh, Crown Thieves. Mm. Well, if the Crown Thieves are interested, then it's probably for a political reason, but... We'll see, I guess. No, they just wanted our stuff. What do each of these groups want? No, he'll hold up a hand. You said they just wanted your stuff? Yeah, they were just... It was like, they wanted uh, 50 gold to pass, or take our stuff. Oh, well, that's the traditional toll rate around here. Lovely. So? Okay, so what? he says that. That's obviously illegal and bad, but the way he says it is like, no, oh, that's pretty regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's. I mean, yeah, they asked you for 50 gold. That's market price. Yeah, yeah. That's all we had for 50 gold. <laughs> that's, that's incredibly reasonable. Anyway, and so what yep. does each of these group want? Or what does each of these groups want? You said one is more inclined towards politics, so there must be differentiations between them, aside from who is at the head. Well, the crown thieves want to take from the rich and give to the poor. Um, and they're pretty good at that. In fact, they tend to only really target uh, those that have wealth or means, like nobles or you know, Metharian patrols, things like that. Um, as for the others, I think the gum hoes just want to have fun. Uh, it's it's really hard to see what they want. They kind of just live in the swamp and just do drugs and drink alcohol and all sorts of manners of degeneracy that I would never do in any way, shape, or form, obviously. Um, insight check. I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's... We were told to behave. Oh, your insight check will reveal to you that he gets crunk and dizzy. All the time. He is right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
The Blaze Bandits, I think, are just trying to have fun, really. Uh, like the gum holes. But, well, okay, that's not fair to say. They're like performers, actually. In, in fact, the Blaze Bandits only really steal from people that are, well, bad audience members when they put on their shows. They're more like a traveling carnival, really. But sometimes they do some more advanced levels of extortion. Like, one time... <laughs> uh, yeah. One time in the actual capital of Owl of Fife, um, one of the region's sons went missing because one of them actually convinced him to join them. And then, when they found out that he was the region's son, they imprisoned him and then sold him back to his father. But here's the funny thing. He actually did join them. So when he was sold back to his dad, he just left again and pocketed his share of the money. Amazing story. Crazy. As for the um, last ones, the Crimson Tears, are, they're the worst of the bunch. They, they, don't, they don't fight for anything but just an evil greed. And they like killing. You see, many bandits don't actually like to kill. They will if they have to. But they'd much rather just have the money handed to them. Which is why the going rate of 50 gold is pretty reasonable. Merchants prepare it. Travelers prepare it. Just in case. But I digress. The Crimson of Tears are the worst. I've seen their leader cut a man's head off for looking at him the wrong way. The dude was blind. No offense. Mm. Not taken. <laughs> Giddy, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Taken. sorry, that was <laughs> that. That was like three Thorn... layers of comedy, right there. That was great, dude. Thorn, Thorn was keeping it like keeping the straight face until Gideon says that, and then she just starts breaking down with the laughing. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Oh, all right. Is there anything else that comes to mind? Well, there are other smaller gangs, but they're not really worth mentioning. They're just, hell, they probably won't even exist by the time you're ready to move in. Uh, I will say probably um, the other thing to keep in mind is, um, so, this is kind of a, maybe an uncouth thing for you guys, but um, since there's no real legality system for the marketplace in Aldefife and Dark Lake and basically any place in uh, the Fallow Lands. People charge whatever they want and sometimes they'll collude to charge to up to upcharge during desperate times. Normally you're not supposed to intimidate or physically assault or spit piss or shit on a merchant or their possessions. Of course not. But that is kind of how things are done here in order to establish that you aren't a bitch and therefore are expecting market value. He says all of this as if it's perfectly normal. Thorn is... Thorn is horrified. Oh. Why are... Which one would you recommend to do? Well, see that really see that really depends on what you're dealing with. Like most, like if you're dealing with a family man, you know he's got like a family with him. You know you don't want to like defecate on his stuff because his kids might get sick. You know, but it's good to pick him up by the collar, make it look like you're gonna hit him, scare his kids a little bit. It'll let him know that you're serious, but don't actually hit him because then he's gonna sh you're gonna just show yourself as a as a just a brute. You know, bring his price mm -hmm. down. You'll pay for it. You'll let him go, and then. But it is considered proper protocol to buy a suite for one of his kids and make sure that he sees it, so that he understands that it's all business. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that if you ever run into an old lady by herself selling, you are being watched. She has guards, and they have crossbows trained at you. Don't get physical. You can, however, insinuate her price be lowered by whipping out your dick and pissing on her products. They can't shoot you for that, and it'll establish dominance. Uh, if you're a lady, uh, you can just spit on her. Okay. Family guy, intimidate, old lady, 
piss on stuff. Yeah. Now or female spit. Yeah, spit obviously because you can't really like aim it the other way. At least maybe you can. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, um, your worst thing though is if you're dealing with somebody who's just a douchebag. You know, just like he's he's like he thinks all his stuff's really good and it's not. The best way to even that playing field is that you back off, you go when he's not there, and then you shit inside of the place where he keeps his coins. And then when he comes back, he's got shit-covered coins. He can't give you change. Then you pay for something, and then he has to give you coins in exchange for the change. And then he won't because that's embarrassing. And then you tell him, hey, you got to give me your change back. And then he says no. And then you start roughing him up, right? But now you actually deserve it because... He didn't give you back your change. Yo, if anybody asks, that guy didn't want to give you your change. And nobody knows that you shit in the bag, right? So then you start beating his ass. And after you get him, like, you get him down a couple marks. You know, you get him marked up real good. Wash his face up. And then you tell him, hey, can you come down on that potion from 50 to 35? You know, I got I to gotta take care of some business. You're going to do me a real solid. And then he'll kind of whisper under his painful breathing. It's like, yeah, sure, you know. And then you kind of go back and forth. You know, this is just how things are done around here. Once that again, was, he says that. that as if it's. I, that was very specific. Yeah, well, you know, it's good to go over scenarios that haven't happened yet. I. Insight check. Oh. <laughs> that definitely already happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Okay. Oh, uh, um, praise Metharia. He'll hold his fingers up and kind of point at you both. Huh? I... Yes. Praise Matheria. And by her holy light, we're forgiven. I mean, we are. Yes. Amen. Help. But only if you're serious about it. Well, of course I'm serious about it. I totally want to be forgiven. No, I'm... Thank you for the information. I'm still... reeling, and the last one is a lot to put into uh, simpler terms. Okay. Oh, there's something else too. Um, so, Aldefyth and the Foulwinds don't have access to uh, anointed whores, so what you're going to have to do for that, I would suggest that you kind of really scope the area out because some, rep some establishments are not reputable at all. Like, they got the gang ring or they got some other weird shit with them. Best thing for you to do, go there, see how well the madam is taking care of herself, right? If she looks pristine, that's a good establishment because that means she cares about it. If it's like some rundown hole and her hair is in a mess or her shoes are messed up, don't touch it. That's a cesspool. It's going to fall off or it's going to seal shut. He'll throw it over and he'll throw in a bombastic side eye over to Thorn. G Gideon, you don't need such places. <laughs> Gonna uh, re reach hands I, for ears. I could not care less about going to one of these places. You sure? That's why you're, you're gonna the find, best. You're gonna find a lot of information there. Ain't nobody know more than well the whores. Uh, yeah. I'll, uh, go in there for information's one thing. Go in there for that. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You know. To each his own. Um. But yeah, I think I think that about covers it. So what physical skills do you have? What are you good at? Oh, uh, I know how to fight. Sometimes dirty, sometimes not. Uh, oh. He's an outlaw! Specialize in using one weapon or multiple? Oh, I, 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 spe time. I, use a, I use a scimitar. I use these. He shows off his cestus. Is that... Normally, I, I just stick with the uh, the greatsword, but this past few combats have taught me that I really need to branch out and expand. So I was thinking maybe of trying to dual wield some weapons, so if you could help with that. Well, I could teach you how to dual wield, yeah. Come on, let's get into a scrap. Come over here. <laughs> He'll trip you and throw you on the ground before you before you've even started. And then he'll say, that's lesson one. There's always a fight. He'll offer you his hand. <sighs> Noted. All right, let's get to scrapping. And he starts scrapping you. 
He starts scrapping you real good. He fights very dirty. Gideon gets tripped, has dust thrown into his face. At hey. one point, <laughs> Shale, while in the middle of your fighting, when you finally look like you're about to get a leg up on him, catches your greatsword with a Cestus's hand, and then uses his other hand, of which his weapon's been disarmed, pulls up his pants, and just starts peeing on you. Oh, what? And then, while you're distracted, punches you in the face. <laughs> After you pick yourself up off the ground, he goes, Remember, anything's a weapon. Honor is only afforded to those that win. Oh, he fights like an outlaw. Oh, yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, And then he steals your potions and drinks them. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do no! about it. <laughs> he, Yoink. he just drinks them right in front of you. That bastard. Man, I feel like a cleric all of a sudden. I don't know. Weird. <clears throat> Alright. I'm gonna have to scrap him later as well. <laughs> Meanwhile... Hey. Hello, Master and Evo. Am, am I saying your name correctly? Uh, in Evo Petiso, but you can just call me Pat, if that works for you. Very well. Um, I myself tend to favor the shadows, but, um, I'm looking for, perhaps, personal improvement. Very nice. Very classy. Uh, sure. do you have anything? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I can I can show you. Do you have anything that would uh, perhaps be considered more exotic than what I'm using now? Uh, something that would be good for range, but also close combat as necessary. You know, I've got Off. this. I've got this cursed gama. He pulls out rope dagger. Kunai with chain. Hey. And he also pulls out a rope dagger. <laughs> and she also pulls out throwing stars. And he also pulls out daggers. And she also pulls out darts. Perhaps I asked the wrong question. I should have asked how you're able to carry all of that. Oh, many pockets. Pockets. What ingenuity. Um, could you teach me perhaps how to use this dagger here? She points to the rope one. Yeah. Uh, watch this. Water! You look a little thirsty. Have some water! <laughs> Start showing you how to use it. Very cool. Um, mechanically, if I were to retrain my mastery in my half plate into uh, mastery of the rope dagger, would that be okay? Rope dagger, you say? Hmm. You want to use the... Hmm. Rope dagger. Yeah, I think so, and I think. Then you can. Are you yeah, going to then... retrain all of your item focus into it? What do you mean by that? Meaning your mastery and your trick, or just your mastery? Because you could have a trick in each. Yeah, if you wanted. Hmm. Let me let me go back and read. As the DM, I beg you to go fully into rope dagger because it's so good. I think yeah, that I, is what she's looking I at. I trip up warlocks like crazy. It's nuts. I think that's what I'm looking at, yeah. I'd like to, to fully retrain. No more armor. Just rope dagger. Yes! <laughs> yeah, yes! All right, and then Anibo will then spend the entire rest of the rest of the time trying to convince you to also take monks so that you can be an infiltrator too. <laughs> because rope daggers are monk weapons. Are they really? Yes. Interesting. You want to be cool, don't you? I mean, I think it would work well for what I am right now as a rogue, don't, don't you? Don't you think it'd be cool if you could just attack 100,000 times with this rope dagger? Cleaving every time. Mm -hmm. It's all just multi-class as monk. That <laughs> is that what the trick does? See, if you became a monk, see, you could then take the subclass of Wandering Warrior, and then you could use your rope dagger for all of your unarmed strike blows, 
and then you'll be swinging around in a circle going constant. No, you can do your rogue thing. It's fine. I mean, we yeah. are in an abbey. We could be a, a monk rogue and a fighter rogue and a cleric rogue. And a monk monk. And a monk monk. A monk monk. <laughs> Monkey. But, but anyway, you retrain into rope dagger as yes. a Nevo teaches you how, and it's very poggart. And um, another question for that are do rope daggers count as hidden like a regular dagger would? Uh, they. No, they are way more difficult to conceal because they have ropes okay. on them. Yes. Okay. It is a big weapon. It has reach. It's it's not really yeah. something. You got you can ten hide. foot of rope. Got to roll that mm -hmm. up and put it somewhere. Yeah, that's that's hard to hide. I mean, pockets. <laughs> well, yes, but there's a limit to pockets because it's I'm rope. Can't I know. It in. You can't do it, Essie. You just can't. I start shaking her. You can't do. Just keep it inside Studio. your sleeves like Scorpion, you know? You know, I was watching a, a stage production once of Les Mis, and um, I'm not entirely sure how they did it, but the, the two that, that steal, yeah, she just kept stuffing stuff down her bodice, and it all disappeared, and as far as I could tell, it didn't look like it folded. It wasn't like a paper prop, you know? It was an actual, like, candelabra. It was an iron. It was, you know, whatever the guy handed her. It all went into her dress. It was amazing. She was I, an outlaw. I so, dreamed a dream of what, time uh, so gone of holding. Very So good. what you're saying is you're going to have a bodice of holding for this mm -hmm, upcoming mm -hmm. campaign. Mm -hmm. Basically. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm just not going to take my rope dagger on the sneaky mission. I'm going to take it when we go for the big bane, yes. probably at the end. And then you kill them all. Here's hoping. Alrighty. What else we got? Scrapping, scrapping, talking, talking, talking. What are you doing? What are you doing by yourself? I'm zooming in. I'm looking. Whoop. I think I need to ask when there's an opening if I guess maybe Sally could help with, um, well, I'm not sure if she is the right one for exotic weapon proficiencies to learn how to use other flails. That might be a different set of instruction. Otherwise, we are mildly horrified at whatever is happening with this scrap here. Kick. Oh. Kick. Yeah, just kick wow. on the ground. Ah. Like Fifteen feet. Let me help you up. Nah. Your stance is weak. Oh, and what can you do, blind girl? All right. Yes, Let me show you. We'll bring out the flails and go all in. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> and mm -hmm. suffer much pain, I'm sure. Well, you're doing a lot better with someone with no eyes. However, <clears throat> there are other flails. Have you considered them? I haven't heard of them. These... All well, this is a newer adaptation. I would love to hear more. All right. She will pick up a large cube that says knowledge and will start bashing you on the head. <laughs> there, he gained some knowledge. What an amazing teacher she is. <laughs> thank you, Sensei. Ow. Oh, thank you, Sensei. Ow. Oh. We're going to do this till you get right. Yes, ma'am. And Evo just starts breakdancing. And then, if you move your legs like this, then you could swing all around you like that. Oh, yeah, but be careful because you don't. You, you, you don't want them to see things they shouldn't. <laughs> well, your turn. You gotta, okay. You gotta, you gotta, you just gotta, like this. Like this? Yeah! Yeah, oh, you're a natural. Oh, here we go. <laughs> they start spinning. <laughs> How spinning. do you spin so smoothly? Rogue Disco. So anyway, um, the next law is that you're not allowed to kiss anybody uh, when the full moon is out because that summons bad spirits. 
Um, the next law that you have to know about is carrots have to be aligned perpendicularly to any sort of pie on the market street or else it's bad luck. He just keeps going like that. Just These use, are some strange laws. Just useless nonsense. This is that section of, hey, remember all those laws in America that make no goddamn right. sense. <laughs> Out of life for this. Like you can't carry ice cream Suffer. in your pocket. That's no swearing at women while a bar- dog is barking nearby. Uh, there's no <laughs> dog barking in that class. <laughs> you can't park your elephant on the street. Oh. That one's a good one. Because <laughs> that means somebody did that shit. <laughs> so somebody did that. It's like, you can't do that. It's like, where's the law that says I can't where's the park law? my elephant right here? And he's like, all right, well, I'll be right back. He goes to the judge. <laughs> hey. Right. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> Most well laws, behaved. most laws can be silly, not OSHA ones. Those are written, <laughs> those are written in blood. Follow the OSHA laws. Yes. Well-behaved please. copper merchants no, aren't none of, my homies, none of my homies follow the OSHA laws. Unfortunate. No. We all just end up on live leak. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> live stream fails. Oh no! Because oh. Of, hey, no, hey, my wheel. I just me. We lost one. Oh. How many? Just one. Oh, okay. Just one. <laughs> Got him. Uh-huh. That was fair. All right. As Ginny tries to jump in and flank the outlaw, uh, he will dodge and will sweet kick Gideon. Come on, Gideon. You see? That's how you huh. turn. Oh, also, bonk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get up. He's get so up. high level. All right, get up. Get up. Let's go. Come on. Let me show you some other some other moves. So this it's one getting th- very frustrating. What? Well, yeah, it's supposed to be frustrating. You're in a fight. You think you think it's gonna be like a okay? Like you'll like come on. Like seriously, think about it. You'll be in a fight, right? And then all of a sudden, the enemy will do something that you're like, oh, that's bullshit. Like like imagine if they could just walk on water, right? And then they could summon like weeds that grab you when you're walking across the water, and then you can't move at all. But then you can't get to them because you only have melee weapons. And you're like, this is bullshit. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Why the spear is the ultimate weapon? Seize. Yeah, that is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, that is bullshit. This is why spears are great. Ultimate teamwork weapon. You can throw them. It's great. It's very good. But I believe you're thinking spear, of javelins. You no have it. Farron shouts across the field. Javelins are inferior. They snap when you stab hard. I've never seen anyone throw a spear. Oh, yeah, I mean, and then, and, and then you can do a backflip every time you attack. You just, huh! Huh! Like you just go, huh! Huh! Almost. Uh, you, gotta un- you gotta unlock your mouse wheel so you can, huh! 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 <laughs> Why is it lagging so bad? <laughs> I can't do it. She, she's doing a flip in slow motion. <laughs> Lagging in mid flip. That's so funny. All right, and so the party <sighs> continues their training uh, for over the course of the next couple of days before they are called by the Inquisitor back to the conference room. Uh, I'll be right back as I must go pee pee poo poo. Be right back. Oh, real quick. While he's gone, then. Mythos. Yes, Captain Farron. Ah. Uh. You've been mentioning to me several times uh, that you wanted to learn from me. Yes, that is correct. Yes, well, I'm sure uh, I can teach you something. Uh, My position in life has required me to, and she'll roll her shoulders just once, uh, always prove myself and my worth. And so I've learned a little of each trade, even if I have no natural talent with it, so I never fall too far behind others. It's no small feat, but with practice and ingenuity, you can find you'll accomplish most everything you set your mind to. Are you ready? Yes. All right. I can live up to your expectations with this. Well, um, what skills do you think you're lacking in? In all honesty, most. I am a quite studious individual, so I'd say I have a quite good intellect in my knowledge of most textbook things was quite high, but I've not really had much experience with a lot of practical applications of things out in the real world. 
So mm. there's a lot that I'm lacking in, in all honesty. That's why I came to you, because even from the short time you've been with us, I've been able to study how you were able to just adapt and always be ready for every situation. Even just getting us out of the swamp that we were stuck in. I mean, Mr. Mikael is a good navigator, but even his talents, the complicated layout of the swamp itself even proved tricky for him. But with your help, we were able to get through with ease. Hmm. And other well, things like that. Thank you. Uh, shall we start then, I suppose, with the more physical things and uh, work our way from there to the more mental attributes, I suppose? That would be fine with me. All right. And then she'll just start running you through a rigmarole of like the little yeah. tricks and tips that she's learned through her <laughs> decades of practice uh, how to be slightly more athletic it's really just daily training how to be slightly better with oh. animals you know introduce yourself to them uh be calm you know but drawn because they'll sense weakness so on and so forth you get the gist Gives you a wordle for every day. He is. To help with he might moves. not be the most <laughs> adept at things, but he was not wrong. He's very studious, and even if he's not immediately latching onto it, it's soaking into his brain in one way or another. Mm hmm. Of course, she's not the best teacher. You will see her fail once or twice, but she'll never count herself as actor, the actually raw, and she will count herself as just like, well, we'll try again, you know? Here we go. <laughs> Cool. You should tell Arcadum, you know. Yeah, We've I'm done putting out all my plans <laughs> stuff. I'm doing all that, yeah. Thorn, as, uh, as they're heading in, um, could you hold, stay behind for a moment? We need to talk. Hmm? Uh, if... Hmm, all right. I wanted to work on something at the altar and gather some candles and incense, but it, I suppose. I suppose that's a fine place. I'll follow you then. Excellent. Though I don't think we can control the map. The map? What do you mean? Which means just bring the camera for up the fourth the wall. Oh, the fourth wall. Yeah, we'll pretend we're there. It's fine. We'll pretend <laughs> we're there. <laughs> Very good. And um, yeah, I wanted to do some prayers, but if you'll let me get this started, I'd be happy to listen to you. She sets mm. up five candles and. Maybe with your help, she lights each one in turn. Talon, Saltspire. Shane, Saltspire. Ariel, Ward. Arabella, Ambersong. And Metheria of Corvanus. Lord Death, please gently guide our loved ones to Metheria's embrace and keep them safe with you. I know life must end, but your claws leave bitter wounds that don't really heal. Please care for our goddess of light who struggled to give Corvanus a chance. And please stay your hand from what, what little is left, at least for a while. <sighs> I'm back. Her light protects. Hmm. I, listen, I, I wanted to speak to you, um, privately. As you I wish. Feel, I feel like I should apologize for my colder attitude towards you earlier and please no it was fair look no, I, I know please. i messed up i've 
been I've been trying to Thorn. change, and I haven't told anyone. Okay. Thorn, please uh, excuse me. That's on me. I uh, I don't want to hold. Look, I've I've spent a couple of days with this squad, and and I'm I'm realizing something very important that this won't work if we are. We need to fix us. I, I apologize for my cold attitude. I... Please excuse me about it. Of course. There's... I've been traveling. I'm, I've been very, very worried about Tellery. And when I saw you, there were conflicting emotions. Both because of the antics that you two would get up to as kids, but also because I know that you probably care about him as much as I do. I need you to know that I realized this, and, and we're both adults now, and we're serving the church in earnest. Whatever my family's or my personal feelings about you in the past should stay in the past. That's for the best. I agree. I... It, work is work and leave feelings at home is easier said than done, especially if we're uh, living together and working together day in and day out. This won't work if we're if there's animosity. I, I understand that. I am I understand. Hmm. <sighs> and you don't you really don't need to apologize and she'll offer some physical comfort, whether it's hand on the shoulder like you don't I I understand a lot better now it's it was a lot okay you have come a long way from what I can tell you're you're a grown-up now a lot far cry from bracelet exchanging with my brother as okay. children but ah! none of that's in the none past of know about that uh, yeah I won't tell them about that, but I know about that, and my family knows about that, and... <laughs> I have to ask, yeah. while we're on the topic, um, you were probably his best friend, R? I, I don't know what the status is on that anymore, but... Do you have any intuition on why he would come to the East? Okay. I hope... His disappearance is causing a lot of family grief. I... I hope he still thinks what, that we're friends, but... Well, he's been... As one could predict with him, <laughs> terrible about communications. You know, there haven't been any letters since he went off on his field trip. And I just have to hope that that's, um... You know, that he's... Busy and a bit careless. Um, but he, I mean, Teller is always curious and he'd love to explore and find, uh, find new things to ask questions about. So I'm not surprised that he would want to travel around. He, he, he doesn't like reading at all. So it's not like the library could have kept him within the Pale City to satisfy that sort of craving like can for most. Between you and me. I think he's lost somewhere. Like, like I don't think he knows where he is. He, he tends to look out on things more than your average halfling, I suppose. I get the feeling that he's alright, but lost. And I, I'm hoping we'll find him, but... Look, that's a secondary thing. We have our mission here. And... If you think of anything, if you think of any reasons why he'd be here, or or where he might wind up, I don't know. I'm open. I'm open to talking, Thorn. Thank you, Jenny. It's it's a weight off the shoulders that you are taking this well. I I've <sighs> watched you. For a while, you you seem to put a lot of weight on your shoulders. Don't 
don't add more than you need to add. This, the work we do for Metheria and for the church, it, it is a burden, but don't make it your burden. We carry it as a family. <sighs> it's easy for others to be successful on their own, for their own gain and their own choices, but we're called to something greater than ourselves. The task the Lady Metheria has left us in this life is not an easy one, but it is a narrow path. I believe Thank in you. you. That, that makes me really happy. She'll go for a hug. Mm. Rip, Jenny. Yep, I will hug. <laughs> okay, we should probably... Big hugs. We should probably go in for the meeting. Very short hug. Yes, good. Okay. <laughs> Jenny is like patting to end the hug. Thorn mm -hmm, squeezes. Mm -hmm. Pat, 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 <laughs> awkward patting. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Please release me. <sighs> and don't forget, okay. sometimes you can uh, put your you can put like poop all over your blade, and then you can cause sepsis when you stab somebody. It's really great. Just in case they get away, you can find them later. Just don't let them get away. Well, you can't always guarantee that. Well, if I get better at fighting, then they won't. It's not like you can be good in every fight. And sometimes you gotta run away. There's no shame in running away. Eh, whatever. You know, you look like the kind of guy who's ran away before. No. At least not intentionally. Mm. Got turned to stone once. <laughs> Bro, same. What? Yeah. I've been stoned lots of times. No, <laughs> like, magically, whole body turned to yeah, stone. Yeah, same. A hag turned you into stone? Well, that's not very nice to say. I mean, she wasn't that bad looking. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta make uh -huh. myself laugh. Anyway, over here, you two were talking? Oh, we were, yes. Oh, yeah. We right. did that when you were gone. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. You go poop, you miss out on RP. Sorry. Arcade will just have to catch the bod, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> Communications are happening. What, 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 are you, what, what are you doing, Bob? What are you doing? Bob. Bob, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, communications are happening. Uh, you learn spells. We communicate like ants just, or yep. bees through dancing. <laughs> Pork in the list us? Okay. Thank you, Robert, All right. For showing the Inquisitor me. has called you. Wee woo, wee woo. Time for plot. Wee woo. Oh, I just walked right through that wall. Jenny <laughs> <laughs> did. She just... Amazing. Are we all going to walk through the wall? Is that possible? Yes, it is. There's no collision. We are free. I parkour oh. through this open window. <laughs> I was forgotten. I better go That's NPC fine. stand over here. <laughs> well, I should be preparing for my journey, fellows. I wish you all the best of luck. May Metheria's light guide you. Time for me to continue my journey. To the north, where who knows what saints and sins I might encounter. Ooh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, he said the name. He Metharian fast traveled. <laughs> yeah, which is just opens menu, clicks place. <laughs> <laughs> That's true Metharian spells. Just swipe. Very sword art. Okay, a guinea. <clears throat> with a, with it, a J sound, yes. 
All right, James. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jesse. James. James. <laughs> the way he, the way he says his name, it's like because <laughs> Jesse's like Jesse, and he's James. <laughs> It's like he, he, like he, did, he, he did the Tim Curry guttural, like pleasurable sound. Just, <laughs> oh, James. <laughs> I like the purr at the end. Very nice. Oh well, yeah, he purrs, dude. Like he's a man who purrs. Very good, dude. He's a fucking cat. <laughs> like he, he's just is. He also has one of the best villains ever in Fern Gully, man. God, Hexus was sick. Yeah. Never heard of it. Oh. Are you being serious? Don't do this yes. to me, Pate. Oh, God, dude. You, wow. Community night. Community night. Yeah, I'm going to have to take care of that. Yes. If I ever want to like feel man sexy, I just listen to Hexus' mm -hmm. villain song. God. Is that the one where he, he's the, dressed up as the devil? No. No, no. no. It's, okay. it's a cartoon, man. Oh! Like, he's just like... I, too, wish to be a man moaning like that. Anyway, yes. Back to the... To de... Back to the plot. Manly voice to activate. Yeah. Blah. He starts vomiting plot everywhere. Okay, no. There we go. Let's see. Um... Back. Go through my checklist here. Oh, that's right. I need to ask this. So, Ginny. It is the mm. morning of the meeting with the Inquisitor. You've been training for a couple of weeks now. When all of a sudden, <clears throat> as you wake up this morning, you find something in your pack that wasn't there before. Ah. You find a mysterious letter. Oh my gosh, here it is. Uh huh. What do you do? I read it. Am I here at the table with this letter? No, you're in your room. You just woke up. Oh, in my room. Okay. I read the letter and. Huh. Alright, now I will read it to you as if it is Marlo writing it with his inner his voice. punctuation is terrible. But yes, go ahead. <clears throat> Let me see, can I do Luke's voice? <sighs> Hold on. Let me think for a second. Old monotone. Uh, he, you gotta do the. Let me think about it for a second. It's War like, of Babylon. It's like um. There you go. Uh, I know more. I know things. I know things. I know. Uh, 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 I know things, but have no confidence. And uh, uh, hello, it's a little. Uh, I like cigarettes. Uh, okay, I think I got it. Faith rests at the deepest light of the unconscious mind. Zealotry is that which possesses the mind that rests upon your faith. Zealotry. If you have outsourced your intellectual responsibility, then you have outsourced your intellectual integrity. What is it you truly have faith in? If it is your zealotry, your teachings, I will consider you husks of men, patterns of speech, puppets of no character. Who are you, Metharian travelers? What do you believe in that is deeper than the shallow stitching of your tabards? Is there a belief that transcends your, ge uh, your zealotry? If you believe in Metharia, you can go save her, finally hear her speak. She is at the center of the daemon wastes, her soul trapped in the body of a succubus, chained to a rock. Free her soul while her father, the Barrow King, wages war while the high priest serves as a vassal for her stolen light, soon to die and be replaced by those maidens who haven't been turned into flesh abominations. Your religion has been stolen, 
Your church is losing a war on f three fronts, soon to be five. Your goddess lives. Perhaps if you will find your faith under the paper-thin banners you have outsourced your characters to, then show the world who you really are. Watch your M, a traveler from afar, giving to those what they need to shape the world. <clears throat> also, Jenny, hi. I just, this really, just beautiful eyes. I find this letter and I read it. And I'm going to fold it up and put it in my pocket. And then I'm going to find the captain. Oh boy. I tried to get Luke's cadence down. You're right. Yeah. He did pretty good. I think he did pretty good. Mm -hmm. cool. Little, little, little quicker, little th Watcher M. My gosh, Watcher M <laughs> is so good. I, I love. He it. is a fucking voyeur for sure. I mean, it's better than just we are watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the ancients no, are watching. We're watching. Don't worry. Oh, so um, mysterious. <laughs> I'm going to find Captain walk up to her when she is away from so else. outside of uh, this conference room mm -hmm. all right let's let's do it here in front of the in front of the altar of Etheria's grace and light and honor and love and the honesty uh, captain farron can i speak to you for a moment i suppose what do you need genevieve it is uh important and strange Mm -hmm. This morning when I woke up, I found this letter in my in my bundle of clothing. Um, I don't know how it got there. I don't know if someone is trying to pull a prank or if there are already apostates in our midst. But um, have a look at this and I will hand you the letter. It it makes several claims and several assumptions about our religion and our belief structure signed by some Watcher M person. There are a couple of people that I could think of with M as an initial. Yes, quite. How, how well do we trust the people in this abbey? I, I don't know who planted this letter. I don't know why it came to me. Genevieve, uh, you're new to the team. Who am I supposed to know that uh, it actually did just appear? I honestly don't remember your family's names. Um, one by one, as it were. But suppose you've had it on you this entire time, and you're just now bringing it to my attention to try and frame someone. This is not the kind of thing that my family would be involved in, Captain. And I'd appreciate you not make that kind of assumption. We've been generations faithful in the light. True, but, uh... I swear I don't know where this letter came from, but... I am concerned about it, and I brought it to your attention for a reason. I appreciate that, I suppose. It is just halflings are hard to trust, you know. Mm. Tricky little critters, as it were. But uh, you're right, your family has been faithful in the church for quite some time. I have watched you all grow up in it. Uh... I wouldn't want to throw the blame on someone that we've signed a contract with. I will keep it for further investigation for now. Thank Thanks, you for bringing I... it to my attention. You seem responsible, and 
I wanted to bring it up the chain of command first. That was right of you to do. I know. In any case, um, if you feel that I should be involved in further investigation of this note, I am ready, and she will shield salute. But if not, that is your prerogative. I figured I'd bring it up to you. Of course. I will keep you informed as I see fit. Good, thank you. She nods. I'm... I, I would be lying if I didn't say I would be was concerned about the idea that the the claim that Metheria is alive and the other mentioned details it's unsettling it, do you think this would be the kind of thing that someone would write to try and divide our attention Possible. Um, I'm sure there was a reason the Inquisition was brought back after our time of absence. And if it is that things are moving quickly towards a, a destination, I suppose this would be propaganda someone might assume would work in dividing us. Seems a rather far-fetched idea, no? Mm, it does. It it seems <laughs> incredibly heretical, if not hard to believe. That being the case, I I get the feeling that this timing is not coincidental, and especially just before our big mission here, I'll try and put it out of my mind as best I can, uh, and focus on the mission. But thank you for taking this responsibility off my shoulders. I appreciate your position. Yes, but Genevieve, don't forget, we are here to learn what we can. If it happens that the um, heresy being practiced in Dark Lake is uh, towards this end, and, and she'll fold the letter carefully a little bit more and, and put it in one of her pockets of her armor, um... If you make a certain connection towards this letter, do bring it up, won't you? Yes, I will. I'll keep an eye, ear to the ground, as it were. Should we bring this up with Inquisitor Cast, or are we keeping this in the party, or between us, even? I need to. I need to know who you think I should keep secrets from, as I am inherently terrible at keeping secrets unless I know that they are supposed to be secrets. Farron tries very hard to stop the roll of her eyes from becoming audible, but <laughs> she'll, she'll look down at you and say, for now, keep it between yourself. We wouldn't want Inquisitor Cast to question your loyalties, much like I did, no? And we certainly don't want to give this particular team any further ideas. They've struggled enough and are on somewhat loose uh, ground as it is. Agreed. And, okay, well, I'm going into the meeting room. Um, Captain. Yes? I wish to honor my family and Metheria. Please, I beg that you don't disregard my family's honor. Farron just, her lips kind of go thin line, and she just kind of gives a very small nod. Halflings. Secret monologue. <laughs> Secret monologue. You want me to monologue? 
In the Abbey. Come on. <laughs> in the Abbey. I think that would be so good. Maybe be Give prejudiced. Us those thoughts. Give us those thoughts. Um. Gosh, I don't monologue very much. Come I'm on, I'm new to it. this. I'm not Marlo. You can do it. 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 You want it in character? Yes. Ooh, you're Ooh. asking for a lot. Especially since I haven't decided where my character is going. Just talk, just talk well, your that's way the point: is talk you just talk through, through yeah. talk yeah. your way through it. It doesn't yeah. have to be coherent. Let me yeah. let me see the inner workings of your character development. Okay, fair and will. Um, glancing around real quick, looking at the doors, making sure she's alone. She will pull out the parchment one more time and see if she can discern anything. You know, like um. She's not necessarily trained in this, like she doesn't have a scribe kit, but she'd want to know, does she recognize the handwriting or where the, the paper is from or the ink used or anything like that? Even the smell on the paper, you know? Well, the first thing that you notice is that the paper is has a light residual sense of magic, most likely conjured. The ink doesn't, however. You don't recognize the handwriting, but you do recognize a bardic script when you see one. This was not written by somebody whose logical concourse is to produce information in a tactical manner. This was written with prose, with poise, and great effort. Other than that, the best that you're able to tell is that this purported claim of knowing where Metheria is doesn't fit any of the texts nor any of the normal uh, heretical behavior. Most heretics claim that she has never existed or that she had not ascended or things of that nature. No heretic that you've seen so far in your experience has claimed that she is still alive. Which is heretical because it goes against what the scriptures say. Not necessarily that her still being alive would be a, a terrible or evil thing. Right. Um, we all wish Metheria was alive, but... As a character, having spent 30 years in the church, more or less, give or take, 37, um... Has she had the opportunity to go through some of those sacred texts? Not just, like, what the scriptures say, but some of the historical documents Indeed. at any point? And most of the information that this individual is speaking about, such as the role of the maidens and what the mm -hmm. vessel actually does for the high priestess, these are things that only a scholar would know. Someone with a proclivity towards historical documents and someone who is well-versed in history itself. And there's very few individuals that could boast that kind of knowledge. It would be people associated directly with the church, which such a heretical document would most certainly not easily be placed. There is perhaps uh, some hermits somewhere that might be a, a remnant of the past, especially if they are elven. And those in the West would possibly have this knowledge, but they certainly wouldn't have traveled this far to deliver it. The final piece is the Bard's College can possess such knowledge. Indeed, it is their job to uphold history. But since the war in Mornhal has been raging, there has been uh, no Bardic activity in the Pale City, at least of an official stance. What is, mu what is more curious was how this letter was delivered, apparently in the middle of the night. No official courier. And then it strikes you as you look at the magic that you start to follow the natural trail as you can detect it. And it seems to lead backwards further into the abbey. The trail is residual and will no doubt fade, uh, fade after a short time. So you can either attend the meeting with the Inquisitor or investigate this phenomena before it fades. Oh no, I'm going to investigate for sure. As I suspect. 
And as she investigates, she's also going to think back to her childhood in the Misted Lands. Um, was an alternate history from what the church purports ever taught. Like, does this match something that she might have heard growing up? Um, yeah, I mean, ironically, the renditions of the West and the East um, of what happened during Matheria's reign, the debate isn't whether or not it happened in the sequence that it happened in. It is the debate as to whether or not those were morally righteous actions or not. Mm -hmm. Basically, Metheria rose, conquered the continent, uh, and then died or transformed or whatever you want to call it. Whether or not that happened is not up for debate. It is whether or not that those that, that is a good thing that happened or not is what's up for debate. At least according to the rebels. So, as you start to follow this um, this trail, instead of attending the meeting, you get to about... Oh, God, which one of these beds was Jenny in? This I want to say that one? Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> you come around the corner, and you can see that there is a heavy presence of magic and then suddenly, a large beacon of it, glowing in exposure here, rapidly fading. Hmm. Should I try to check on that, like? Arcana check. Okay. Take my inspiration. Reroll it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cute. Nice. Hey. Hold that thought, please. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> and hold it. Hold those thoughts inside of you. Don't let them have a curse blanket. Oh man. Room. The oh. cursed blanket. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I'm telling you. It's the fucking mages. They're out to get me. <laughs> they right. just changed the targets. Cursing they all missed. the beds. They missed by a little. But Mythos it's checked all me. the beds. All there right. was no magic down there. Oh, you're worried. All right, listen up. This is where things uh -huh. are going to get wild. Ooh. As Farron steps forward, and attempts to investigate this strange permeation of magic, she will suddenly feel a splitting headache crash against her mind. Her vision blurs. She gets a flash, a very strange flash, understanding just at the cusp of her mind. She sees the image of woman in a black robe, a mask over covering her face, the swirling of red threads. Caped, your inspiration has no effect. Hmm. You are left with nothing but the visions, Farron. You don't know what this magic is but it is something that terrifies you greatly. What do you do? Hmm. Woman in black robe with a mask, whirling red threads. Yep. But it scares me. Indeed. Because the amount of mana that you feel emanating around this area, and indeed the presence that you saw, all of these things are the equivalent of a rabbit staring down a wolf. Your faith in Metheria, whatever it may be, strong or not, fading or questioned, is irrelevant before what you see. Can I 
I discern if the woman in the robes looks like any of the holy effigies of Metheria that we have? Absolutely not. Okay. And I suppose that <laughs> my 30 feet of sensed exposure can't find where this is coming from. It's coming from this area where Jenny slept, specifically hmm. above it, in the midst of the air, almost as if the space in that air was torn open for a brief moment. Hmm. You'll see that the brightest point, there is a thin slit within it, like the slot of a mailbox. <laughs> Huh. Well, Farron doesn't want to get sucked away from the team that she's currently leading, uh, leaving them in a, a sort of situation where they'd be <laughs> in trouble. Uh, and she also doesn't really have magical prowess of her own. So it's not like she can close the rift or try to send anything back through the mailbox. Oh, well, now that is an interesting idea, though. Sending the letter back with a message of my own. Uh, would that be something Farron could do, even with no magical prowess? I can provide no answer. Do oh. with what you have, oh and as goodness. you will. Hmm. And again, wouldn't want it to go to the wrong person. Wouldn't want to send a letter through and have it accidentally go to the woman in the robe. Especially not if she's scary. will back away just so she's out of the magic okay out of the exposure mm. she'll look around the room no one's here no one's there None of the servants or, or anybody else, mercenaries no or otherwise. You are alone. Hmm. And the magic is fading. She will. She will let the magic fade. Will I be able to remember this magical signature later, though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she'll let the magic fade. She will open the letter one more time, read it, commit it to memory, and then she's going to go to the fireplace and burn it. Okay. Where's the best fireplace? Is it the altar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's some spy stuff. I like it. Matron gives a plus one. Burn that letter. One moment, please. <laughs> oh, no. Because that's a oh, whole, good. That's, that's a hallowed altar you just burnt that at. Give me a second, please. Oh, was that a bad thing? <laughs> Let's fucking go. Let's go. Hey, I haven't not been us. in a. It's not the I first time. I haven't been in a party where we all get teleported to the demon waste yet. <laughs> oh numbers. boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Am I accidentally going to teleport myself? It's away a good from thing we're level team? six already. 
Wink, Ooh, wink, it nudge, would be nudge. incredible development for this party to lose another captain already. Mm, crazy. Crazy. <laughs> We've been abandoned by another party member. Again. Mm -hmm. She sure Again. is late to this meeting, guys, so I wonder what's holding the captain up. I, I asked her mm -hmm. to look into something. She'll be back when she can. You did? She lies. Did you ask her? I miss Ariel. She was never late to anything. I... Teleporters to my village. It's possible she might still oh, be man. resting. So here's the problem. <laughs> did I do a bad? I'm sorry. Oh god! Right. Damn it! No, you I did support an you 100, percent Captain. You did nothing wrong. We're going to my village. <laughs> we surprise children. See, in almost every instance, this wouldn't have mattered. But it had to be here. It had... Oh, <laughs> fuck, dude. I love D&D. I'm proud of you. Being the good. It's either this or I would have sent it back. I mean, both were bad, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> probably. If you would have touched the crack, I mean, like, who knows what would... Yeah, that Touch would probably mess you up, Captain. <laughs> we don't bad. want you dead. All right. So... Let me explain to everybody what's happening here, so that you kind of have, so you kind of uh -huh. have an understanding. So, a couple of things. First, that paper, a lot of exposure on it. Mm -hmm. That altar, hallowed place. Mm -hmm. The exposure on that paper, not the good kind of exposure. Mm -hmm. Uh. Mm -hmm. Thusly, also, that paper is from a lich's spellbook. <laughs> oh. Because oh. when asked for a piece of paper, Cornelius <laughs> snapped his fingers and gave him some. <laughs> Fucking Cornelius. That's Cornelia. amazing. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> so. Didn't just give him regular paper? No. He, well, he, he did give him regular paper, what he had on him, which is oh. in his <laughs> items. To him, that's normal. Uh, this oh, is amazing. Man. Lich okay. paper, let's go. I've done a bad. So. It's okay, Captain. Couldn't have known. Oh, Marlo did a bad. He took lich paper. It's all his fault. So. I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do this. <laughs> My snake is really haunting us from the grave. That's crazy. Uh, it's with a gallon of lube, Arcadum. No. No, oh, I. If we're all condemned to die, don't worry. I'll tell you all my backstory, just so you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. The the, the runner up. No, prize. the armor. Oh, no. And and the other thing, the other problem is, is that um. Ah, oh, fuck. The risen consent exposure. So, problem. Oh the you other, the, the other, Brendan. the other problem is that technically, by the basis definition, this is a rented, this is a written recounting of historical facts, which therefore falls under Ezekine's purview, because Marlow is a follower of Ezekine, and you've burnt a lich's paper, destroying knowledge, at a holy altar. There, are, there are so many different things happening at once. Like, I, God war. I need a fucking, wow. I need a fucking second. Some, All the gods are um, trying. To if some, anyone else has an inspiration, someone's, someone's getting lock and load it. Someone's getting no. fucking pissed. <laughs> I don't think inspiration will work on a Marlow issue. Oh, the fact that you use inspiration oh. has her involved now, so that's oh. great. Yeah. <laughs> it's dope. God damn! <laughs> Look, I, I just want to survive, buddy. I love um, this. All right, so what I'm gonna what do is, is uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and play play something in the background. Play some elevator music. Okay. Um, you guys role play her being late. I'm while doing I, so wise. While, for while, hear that now? While I sit down and try to fucking figure out what to do. Give me a to let to let chat know. Man, <laughs> Waymaker was gonna burn it himself. <laughs> I yeah, and I mean, I would have burned it as well. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have even Paul read it. I think <laughs> Mythos is the only person that wouldn't have burned it. No, Mika would have anyway, it. here we are with breakfast. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, Thorne, what, what did you have her go look into? That's a, that's a personal lady matter. She is also a lady. What is it? Oh. Your time of the month and you need extra papers or something, or what? That is crude, Mr. Mikael. Thank you, Mythos. A part of life. As she taps her fingers across the table, letting letting Mikael know that that this this will be remembered. This will be part of the next the ne their next uh, tussle. Mikael sees next in meeting. the top right top left corner and <laughs> Thorn, Thorn will, will remember, remember this. this. <laughs> <laughs> You remember what happened last time you tried to mess with me, Thor, and I threw you into the sky. And perhaps fortune will favor me this time. I guess you'll have to wait and find out, small one. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess now... Why don't you just keep your mouth shut, me? No. <laughs> your food... <laughs> your breakfast is gonna oh, be Oh, no, cold. it's a bit charming that he tries and tries again. He's got a bit of that dog in him. It's important for the front line. Well, I guess uh, you're not the small one anymore. It's Ginny, but or my better Genevieve. Uh, da, da, da. And she'll Thank she'll put you. her hands out as it's like we, we don't do we don't. Uh, uh, uh. What? Whoa. I'm halfling. I am small. Okay, not you're all the of them are the okay with that, Mikael. And. Just keep in mind, Mr. Mikael, that were I proportionally as large as you, I would have six times your strength. Well, you're not, so that's too bad for you. Eh. Well, that's the point. She's saying she outmatches your strength already, and if she was your size, she'd outmatch it even more. It's I true. promise you I'm stronger than her. In muscle, perhaps. But in faith and wit, I think I have you beat. It's probably. <laughs> I'm not the smartest orc. Strength, no way. The only person who could probably match me in strength right now is Gideon. Mm. <sighs> hey, Gideon. You doing okay? You've been quiet lately. I'll oh, sorry to push. Push on the arm. Pat on the back. Uh... Something on your mind? Still just working through stuff. I don't... I'm not really sure I understand why the rest of you don't really seem all that upset about losing our captain. But I am. Captain Ward was a star student. I interacted with her a few times. She was someone I looked up to, and I am sorry for her loss. I... Me. Gideon, I worked through my, I worked through it while all of you were unconscious in Moop's estate. Well, that's good for you, Miguel. Well, Get, you Gideon, know what, it's... you motherfucker, I was the one who had to break the news. Okay, I had to wake up. She okay. is turned to ash. Then I had to drag all of you with the knowledge. Not, not right now. I had to bear my own. And then I wake up in a weird man's house, who kept <laughs> touching me and Thorn, and you, weirdly I might say. And then I still had to bear the knowledge by myself. Please. I alone had to bear the knowledge of our captain's passing. Unfortunately, and unable to move in a weird man's house. That man saved you, yes. And then and I would he, rather have stayed stoned than be touched by his heresy. Well, guess what? There's Gideon. nothing anybody could have done about it, Gideon. And I would have rather you not turn to stone. I'm glad that you're alive. Guess what? I had to kill the man anyway. That's enough, both of you, okay? I... Look, she... She's gone and we have to live with that and... You can't go back to stone or anything, okay? You're staying with us. But at least we have that. I agree with Thorn. And just because Stop it. others... No, 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 no. 
No, no, no. And just because others don't seem as sad as you, Gideon, doesn't mean we weren't affected by our captain's passing as you were. If you still make more time to grieve, then do so. But just because me or the rest of the party don't show the emotions as much as you does not mean we don't miss her more than you or aren't affected as much as you. Others grieve differently than you do. May I speak? Sure. <sighs> Mr. Gideon, have you taken time to light a candle and say your prayers for Captain Wood? Every Wednesday. Good. Her... I owe her at least that. Yes. Your grief is not misplaced. It's important. Just as we grieve daily for Our Lady of Light's passing and ascendancy, she watches over us and leads us daily, and I am sure that the leadership of Captain Wood is not lost on you, and that you will remember her and her leadership. I hope it continues to guide you, but don't burden yourself with guilt over that grief. She's in the light now. And As she will always will be. be. And she will always be our guiding star. So we just... I don't know. Never mind. Ariel will always live on in our hearts and our memories. Heroes and memories never die. She may be dead in the physical form, but lives on in our hearts and in our heads. But what good does that? What good is any of that right what now? What good is that? The good's to, to remind you that her sacrifice was be for not for nothing. She died so you may live. She died so we all may live. And you have. It's not time for looking back. We can only move forward. It's something my father says on the regular. There is no going back. There is only forward. And this kind of thing, it, it has the chance to to change you in heavy and deep ways. It reminds me of um, this, wom this woman I heard of who used to um, patrol on the Great Barrier, the, the, the Barrier of Light. And she... I don't know if she was overly troubled by her work or if she went through great traumas, but she went over the wall. She fell into the demon waste and she was, she survived the fall somehow. Whether she was pushed or she jumped herself, that's, no one knows for sure, but she came back through the wall. She fought through so many demons that she made her way out of the demon waste. This is, this is a real thing. This actually happened. But she was never the same. That trauma, it, it broke her. And now she's a raving, rabid beast of a person. She's practically an animal. And don't let this turn you into that, Gideon. She may have started as a servant of Metheria, but now she's a monster. And... I don't think any of your friends here, your companions, would want that for you. I guess you're right. Apologies for the outburst. Hmm. I, I'm sorry to hear. You have nothing for... to apologize for. Your feelings are valid. But don't let them control you. Don't let them consume you. We all grieve differently, and we have to take different paths. 
and I understand that woman's story. I fought for two decades in the waste. I know that could turn people. I mean, look at me. I was going around and killing people for as a rabid animal until I came around this group and I've learned to tame my behavior. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't mean to hide it. I, I didn't mean to hurt you, Gideon. She'll scoop up your hands. I, I know you were working through that. You've been working through a lot since we were in recovery and after losing her. And so I've been, I've been managing it myself, mostly. I'm aware how close you were to Ariel. You and Thorne, I believe, were the closest to her. So I know the loss to you. I know her loss to you was painful. Oh, is come on. She adored you, too. Yes, but not the same as Gideon. So her, her passing is a knife cut to your heart that you cannot heal. And it's grieving and it aches. You can only imagine. But brother, she died so you can live. So live. Don't be mad that you did that. Don't be mad that you are alive. Live in her memory. Make her sacrifice mean something. Make her proud. You have so much of life to live. Your story isn't over. You get to write it yourself is the best thing. You are the author of your own story. So make your path. You have your pen. Now start to write. And you can write it for her, or you can write it for you, or you can write it for Materia. It is your choice. That is the gift of life. Don't be mad you don't have it. Appreciate what you have. Take it easy on him, Mikael. Man, the captain really is taking her sweet time. Yeah, what is down. she, by the way? Okay, that Her seems like a good is going to be cold. To come back in. All right. <laughs> Mr. Milk spent so much time on it. All right, you. Hey. Come here. I'm here. We got here. some stuff to talk about. Okay. So, uh, whilst I was running through my apartment at maximum speed, um, <laughs> trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to do with you, uh huh. I went through each scenario... And this is where my, this is where the chips have fallen, as it were. All right, lay it on me, DM. So. The altar normally would um, use its divine power to produce the blessings of Metheria and the, the canticle of light that contains the, the essence of her that is produced from the religious views of the church and the collected faith. See, but the thing is, is that Metheria is bound away, and so therefore her will, the deity's will, is not actually what is backing this it is the will of priests, of mortal people, and those that are unworthy and incapable of controlling it. So, at the altar, you place down a lich's parchment, which is infused with the corruptive powers of that lich's exposure. You set fire to it, which is an act of purging and destruction. So, what that does is because this is a holy place, the paper can be damaged. Because you chose fire, something that it is weak against, and amongst other things, it begins to destroy it. Therefore, as Cornelius doesn't like people touching his stuff, it activates his contingency plan, which is on all of his items and objects, should anyone try to destroy them, most notably his phylactery and things like that. So, really. that, that magic will activate. Here's the problem. That magic, thrown into all of that pooled mana, with no one to control it, is now going to cause a chain reaction. The Matron of Fate has disallowed any sort of outward rolling, meta or otherwise, in order to manipulate that fate. Therefore, it is no longer controlled by a guided hand. So, because of that, 
this action is directly associated with Marlo's uh, Marlo's actions. The Matron of Fate will not limit the charts that are rolled in this randomization. So, you are truly at the mercy of the dice. Fucking as okay. there is only chaos. <laughs> well, chaos. The dice, no. Uh, I'm here to kill chaos. So there's that. The next bit mm -hmm. is I have to go over who you've pissed off. Okay. Whether indirectly uh -huh. or directly. First, Cornelius's magic doesn't know who you are. All it knows is you're trying to destroy it, so it defends itself. It immediately casts a contingency spell, which we're going to get to that in a moment. <laughs> the next thing is that because you attempt to use a inspiration roll, which is a changing of fate, um, <clears throat> and therefore in the Matron of Fate's domain, on an action that is con directly controlled by Marlo, who subsequently... Uh, requested in a not so banal way that she not interfere at all and should therefore not exist amongst other things she decided to grant him his wish so your inspiration was unable to affect it and now all actions associated with it are also not going to be affected so anything that's dealing with this particular event cannot be inspired against it cannot be birthday 20 it cannot be manipulated um, <clears throat> next thing is that you have destroyed a piece of historical, uh, you've destroyed a historical document, essentially, because Marlo, who is a historian and scholar, recognized by Ezekiah, who is one of the gods of knowledge, uh, has written, amongst other things, a prophetic warning, and a prophetic warning is a piece of history. So, because of that, that document is now considered sacrilege to be destroyed, which you have done so. Therefore, once again, pissing off probably one of the few deities that, you know... Sure, sure. The, the, the one, the, one of the few deities is really hard to make mad, and you, you, made, you made the rock frown, which isn't good. Oh no, well, sad rock. Are for the course. Uh, that, coupled with... Oh, Jesus. Are you going to start playing the pattern? Since the rock music? is sad, is Astaroth now pissed off too? No, Astaroth doesn't care. She's an elf, <laughs> okay. so he doesn't care. Good. <laughs> okay. Um, she started as an elf, so. Yeah, no, she's an elf. He already hates her. He's already mad. <laughs> okay. he, he, hate, he respects <laughs> that she's an elf, but he he's like, whatever, it's an elf, right? He She didn't start as a dwarf and decide to become an elf, which is the most sacrilegious fucking thing you could possibly do. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, so, all of those things have occurred and happened, and the only reason any of that is relevant is because you are standing at one of the few places where the dream has some connection, and that oh. is a divine altar, because divinity oh. in, in my setting requires access to the dream. Now, the Metharians have no fucking idea that that's what they're doing, because they don't actually know how religion works. Right? Uh -huh. They don't they don't actually know how gods are made and how faith works. All they know is what they've been propagandized towards, right? So uh -huh. I'm explaining this out of character so that you know when all the fucking weird shenanigans start happening, you'll know as a character as a player, oh this is why this is happening. Um So basically I've also made Onan Woe mad at me. No, Onan Woe don't care. Oh, this is, oh. this is this is Cute. part of the course. They don't yeah. they don't care. Hey nice. Um but essentially Matron of Fate, Ezekine, and then um, the Light of Metheria all kind of mixed and mangled together. And now we need to talk about Cornelius' fucking problem. Uh-huh. So, Cornelius is a cardinal. Uh-huh. A direct servant of the Seven, or at least at one time he was. Mm -hmm. Which means he also bears access to... Um, uh, knowledge and abilities that are not limited in the normal sense due to his Savenic service. So that means his spells can cause some bad things to happen. And now we come to the big problem. The ley line on which you stand cannot support the spell that is about to be cast. Uh-huh. 
Because of that, there is about to be a rupture. Uh huh. And that means mm -hmm. that a big fucking juice of divine intervention is going to occur. The problem there is no deity with direct access to this amalgamation of divine magic except one. Uh huh. And that is the one who granted Cornelius and all liches undeath when he ascended to that role as the god of the dead, of blood, of battle, and wounds. Oh, fuck. I hope you're ready. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but okay, cool. You're, you're about to find out. Oh, okay, Jesus. cool. Why him of all deities? Why him? Fucking hell, dude. God Man. <laughs> that, that is where uh, I have ended up. Uh, huh? That's crazy. Wait, who's dude. the god intervening? I missed it. Well, hey, you'll okay. see. You'll you'll see. see. And yes, so, sir. here we go. God damn it. Shit. I need to find an appropriate tune. Y'all thought a luck and high was bad. I humbly present that I prayed that Lord Death spare those I care about for a bit. What do you mean? Lol. No, I, I know. I, she did. Was we like, had, a, we had a candle ceremony for her family and uh, Abby, Amber Song. You were in the restroom. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We well, filled out the space. But, hey, Lord so, Death, you want to know But there's a lot too? of fates worse well, than that, you, to be I fair. Mean, I mean, Thorne wouldn't even know who Lord Death is. So, I that, that but is, no, I asked right. you before, like, what Metherians thought on Death, and you said that they, like... They, they don't know who know Lord him. Death is. They, they, they don't. Okay. You don't know that that's a, God. Like saying that you pray t that you, you know you ask that death spare them or whatever. That's whatever. Oh, oh sorry. Bless you. <laughs> Apologies. Grasp his draws just in case you know. Well, I mean, okay. I mean, you don't. Thor no, does not was, know who it, Lord Death is. That was mostly a joke. Uh, you yeah. don't know who Lord. And even if you did okay. know and you did pray to him, he wouldn't care. That's L true. Lord Lord Death does not take prayers, because he's not a god. I am fine with accepting the consequences of my actions, guys. No, I'm just, Don't I'm just, worry. No, I'm just explaining. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. <sighs> Was mostly a meme. My bad. I thought I had asked no, no. through that one. No. No one and the Church of Etheria knows who Lord Death is. Like, most people in Calcatesh or those with extended day at Acknowledge knows that Lord Death is a concept. That is... That is pure player knowledge at this point. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, yeah, most don't even know who the one above all actually is. <sighs> but it'd be cool if we got Lorne on, Lord, uh, Lord in here as well. Lorne is a god of death. He is not yeah, let's Lord get, Death. Let's yeah. just get everybody in. Anyway, proceed. No. Yes. God Con 2020. Anyway. Corvanus will split. <laughs> anyway. All right, Farron. All right, all right, Kato. <laughs> all right, you listen to me. Yes. All right. This is a. Uh, this is some shit. Uh huh. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, not that one. This one. All right, Farron. As you stand in the presence of the burning flames uh, emanating off the page, the entire abbey will rumble, catching the attention of those in the opposing room, and we'll get to them in a moment. The <laughs> altar begins to shake. The magic in the air begins to permeate as you hit a wild magic event, as you overwhelm the altar with the casting of the spell and the rupturing of the ley line. And as you do, something terrible occurs all of that divine will and focus uncontrolled with no one to master it lends itself to the semblance even the smallest fragment of the presence of the god of the undead of blood of wounds and battle and that is the god known as crowley oh the presence is dark and his smile is terrible as it fills your mind with visions of blood and viscera. Stabbing, slashing, 
healing, stabbing, slashing, the rising of those once dead to fight again and again and again in the eternal bloodlust, the eternal carnage, the eternal beauty of warfare. And with that, the entire abbey shakes once more as those long since buried under its hallowed earth begin to stir, seeking to fight one more time. The presence of Crowley in the room begins to shudder and shake. And as you are closest and the practitioner of this burning, the ritual chooses you and swirls straight into your inquisitorial pendant. Slowly it begins to shift, the metal cracking and bending at uneven and unnatural shapes and angles, until finally the pendant changes to that of a pair of twin daggers crossed over each other and dripping with blood. Crowley's whispers can be heard in the back of your mind. Kill. 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 Meanwhile, over here... <laughs> yap, 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 feelings. Yap, 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 Future, yap, yap, yap. Oh, God, in the room, shaking for... I can't oh. see. Yep. What yes, is out of here. As Thorn clings oh. to Gideon as I'll her world her blurs. Under the table to what protect her head on? from falling debris. Wait. Yes, under the table. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. Everybody under the table. I will. What is this coming What's from? Happening. I don't know. Feels like the ground. It is at this point. Earthquake. We'll grab Let's Jenny and milk. curl her up. Didn't they teach you about these arms? at school? No. What is this? Is this like some earthquake? I've already heard about these. It's a Corvanus quake. Yeah, you, it, Mikhail's thrown to the ground. This is a fucking... This whole place uh -oh. is shaking. Oh, God. <laughs> ah, ah. A beam <laughs> falls down on top of your head. An actual support beam. All right, as you as you guys are trying to figure out what the hell is going on, what in my fairy's name is happening in here? Farron. Nothing good, I presume. <laughs> yes. Kill him. Oh, uh, is that in my head? Oh boy. If it's in my head, Farron would speak back to it with her mind, or try to anyway, and say, it's too soon, not now. Crowley demands blood. The Inquisitor will step forward. What is going on here, Farron? Your eyes, what is wrong with them? You can speak. Hmm. I don't know what to say. Uh, there was some heretical magic, and I traced it, and now it seems to have got me. Yo, yo. Wait, are you are you saying that something has grasped you? I don't see anything. It it's in my mind. It told me to kill you. Um. What? Can I? Wisdom saving throw. Okay. I forget, do I get to make these at advantage as well, or is it only uh, skill yeah. checks? Oh. Kill, 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 kill. So not enough, huh? 15 is sufficient. Um, mm -hmm. You grab at your weapon. You try to step forward to attack Inquisitor Carlos. He will put his hand on his weapon and will watch you carefully, as it seems that you're struggling with it. It will then dawn on him on what is actually happening. Fear not, Farron. I have training in such a thing. The possession must be cleansed immediately. 
We need the holy waters of Metharia. We have some here inside of the abbey. I shall get the others. Stay here and attempt. Just don't move. He will open the door. On your feet, Inquisitors! What is it? What's what? going on? What's, going What's happening? On? Farron is in danger. I'll run out. All right, stop there. What? Stop here. Stop. What happened? Stop here. Stop here. Stop. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with her? It wants blood, and I'm presuming it would be bad to give it anybody's, yes? I need you all to fetch me. Fetch me holy water, something to tie her down. The ritual will be long, and it will be painful. Go! Oh, holy water. Mikhail. Right. Do we use these? Uh, where is the holy water? Yes, you can. It's in the kitchen. I can arrest her. No, no, get the water and bring it to me so that I might bless it. I can bless them. Okay. Uh, what is the kitchen <laughs> up here? Okay. Oh, God. Uh, Go to Mr. Milk. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. All right, and that will be his move. I'll go to the kitchen. Uh, you already had a turn. Uh, no, you, no, actually, no, you didn't. Uh, wisdom saving throw, fair. Another one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're good. You may act freely. What would you like to do, fair? Um, I would like to take off all of my weapons and kick them away from me. Oh, Crowley does not like that. Who bad? <laughs> you kick, kick all your weapons away. Mentally. You will, you will hear him yet in the again, background. <sighs> I will think towards whatever is in my head and be like, no, no, too soon. Unfortunately, Crowley can see your heart. You don't want to kill them. You never want to kill them. And you will kill them, slowly, in front of him. Gideon. Uh, I rush her. And I will try to, uh, grapple her. Okay. Is that acrobatics on defense? Yep. Do you accept it, or do you... Yeah, yep. <laughs> even better. <laughs> All right, you grasp Farron and hold her in place, and Gideon, make me a wisdom saving throw. All right. Oh boy. Farron's One moment, you have advantage from Mathos, Gideon. If it's a mind effective effect. It is not. Okay. Oh, well, hmm. well, one moment, let me question. check. What? Would you have sung that hymn this morning when we woke up? I mean, I'll give it to you. Probably not, in all honesty. We're in the middle okay. of a safe well, place, so this. yeah, don't. Okay. My bad. So, grab that. Well, yeah, it, I mean, it was a good thing to think of, but, like, I don't think in character yeah, no. you would not have sung that song. To all right. Fire <clears throat> for that. Uh, Farron's medallion will switch back to the Inquis Inquisition as... A dark shadow will surge down Gideon's arms and into him. The symbol of the Sword of Metheria will shift to that of twin daggers. Oh. And instead, you hear, kill, 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 kill. Brilliant. Jenny. Uh, I'm going to Marshal check. Darn it. Can I tell that it's swapped, or it, is that not perceptible from here? No, it is obvious. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to uh, put a foot under one of Farron's daggers, and actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to stand over her gear, uh, right about here, and uh, actually, no. 
yeah, I'll be here, and then... Quizzers cast? Should I run for water as well, or, or should I hold my ground? Hold her in place! And you, use your chains! Mythos is faster. Understood. Very well. I'll bind them up. I was referring I'll step to over here then to block oh, the other works. exit. And that will end my turn. I believe it is uh, past to Gideon. Alright, so first thing Arcana check. Let's see if there's any funky magics going on around here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wonder. <laughs> is there magic? Yes, okay. Uh, Finally, he passes an arcana uh, check. As you pass your arcana check, you will see the shadow of a terrible face floating over the once hallowed altar to Metheria. All it does is laugh. Mythos is fast. There's no time so for might the... be able to help get enough water. I don't... We need to restrain Mr. Gideon now, I think. And also All his right. favorite if it returns to her. On it. So... I will do 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 do. Oh boy, let's have a. I'm assuming I can't just shackle Gideon because he's probably not gonna let me. He's so I probably have to grapple him. Oh, no. oh wait. He's currently holding he's, me. He's grappling you, and then he has. <clears throat> he's not grappled by grappling somebody else. Okay, but, so yeah. I need to grapple him, grappling you. Okay. Yeah, you have to grapple. Starting a conga line here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Hey. All right, so Mythos will attempt to grapple Gideon Ugh. and do terribly. All right, Gideon, uh. yeah. get off me! Uh. Kick him away! Kill! Uh. Just sit still, my Gideon. Him? We can get this Head. out of you. And then... sh 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 Gideon, Gideon. Okay. Go and grab him. Understood. Well, I would like that, to try and marshal check. Uh, what? Get this, what? What can I understand of any of this aside from I need to grapple Gideon? Marshal check is ineffective here. Oh, good. Oh, no. Great. <laughs> so yeah, we will be going to grapple Gideon if you'll roll. No. Get Kicks hand away. Gideon, cut this out. It might be better not to touch him, seeing as how it passes from one person to another. The Inquisitor will move in. Did you say that it passed from you to him? For right now. I see. It is imperative, then, that Miss Saltspire be the one to touch him. Hurry with that water! I'm only fast enough. He will go here. He will scream as loud as he could. Mr. Milk, bring me water! Oh. Holy water. Oh, you, you want water? water? I, I could bring you some water. That's, that's I mean, I can convert it to holy water myself. Oh, I should oh, probably good. hurry and bring this water. But... You sure you wouldn't want any milk instead? I mean, it's... no water. We have oh. to cleanse somebody. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Milk later then. Look, I've played Minecraft. You can cleanse statuses with milk. With milk. I played Minecraft. My name is Shadow. <laughs> Fair and get out of the way. I'm trying. Your turn. Let... Yep. Acrobatics to try and get out. She's squiggle. I squiggle real good. Squiggle, squiggle. Oh, no. Do I break free? Yeah, you break free. Oh, yeah. Oh, Fast. oh, 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 shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, use that, that backflip you just learned. Uh-huh. Okay. Um. Should I also marshal, or am I just good? You're good. You can leave. Uh... Okay, I'll just back up a bit. Ooh, Do you have to like disengage? Yes, disengage, cunning action. Okay. I am rogue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Damn it! Me again. <laughs> All right, Gideon, wisdom saving throw. 
Uh, I'm gonna give myself disadvantage. Okay. It's you and me, Gideon. Okay. You pass. You may act as you will. Sand down. Out of my head. head. I'll just take it. I know it's like down. just. What were you saying, Capes? I'm just gonna take a knee. Okay. Jenny from the block. We can't trust him to stay that way forever. Stand down, Gideon. And I'll cast hold person at him. Wisdom saving throw, Gideon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's so wise. Uh. Mm. Mark some exposure. My gosh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Can't believe you're casting in this environment. <laughs> it's holy. I am hallowed. <laughs> yeah, that, so that doesn't matter. Oh, God. <laughs> this is a this is a hole. That was incredible. That was he incredible. Back up. <clears throat> you don't want to get infected. It's actually, it's actually way better that he made. Ethos will like, take a step. Back. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. <laughs> so, it's so good that he actually, made that. Do. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, mm. Well, I don't. I don't think my exposure is correct at this time. If we've been here for weeks, it would be back down to three. That's not the problem. Hmm. If but you had failed, that would have given that thing more exposure, and that is not good. They'll disengage and back off. And then leave it to Thorn. And then, But I am going to do this. Uh, yeah. Is there anything I can learn about all this magic that's you around You sure can. Alright. All right. I'd like to learn it. Cool. You start to learn dark things about Crowley. Oh god. Make me a wisdom Whoa. saving throw. No. Oh god. Why? <laughs> My goddess Metheria, please. No. Oh boy. The symbol on his shield will start to change from that of a heart with wings instead to the twin daggers of Crowley. <clears throat> you now start hearing whispers in the back of your head. There, Mythos. Right. It has spread. Well. Thorn. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Who do you pick, oh. Lord? Yeah, I mean, echoing the play fighting, we go go to, uh, I mean, he's kneeling, and so we're kind of charging into him to knock him, knock him prone together. Yeah, with the, the athletics going towards Gideon, because she cannot see the changing symbols. And knowing that it's spread doesn't help her much. She's she's so doing her best, y'all. So you're just trying to knock prone? Yeah. Okay, roll against prone, get in. Okay, knock hey. prone. Well, against, against Mythos. Hmm? Are you, what was that? Against Mythos. Next. Yeah, I'll knock them both prone. Yeah, you can knock oh, them both prone. Oh, am I you able to attacks. do two? Yeah, yeah, you got two attacks. Two attacks. Okay. Okay. Okay, he, he's too slippery. He's so <laughs> dodgy. Damn mucks. Uh, the Inquisitor will start to pull out a symbol of the Inquisition and will begin to make a chant to Metheria. Hold them in place! <clears throat> oh, let's see. oh, there you are. Good, good man. Quiet. Here, have some of this water. Thank you, milkman. You are welcome. Let's go. Oh, good. have a good day. What a fine lad. Seems to be in a rush. I wonder what that shaking was earlier. It woke me right up out of my milk nap. My dash. I wonder what it would be like if I sloshed the milk together more. Maybe I could make a new kind of cheese. I'm here with the water. Faster, Mikael. <laughs> Use those gigantic legs of yours. I swear you only run as fast as I do. I... Yeah. Uh, is it an item interaction to take the water? Yep. So I can use my regular action to then dash, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I bring it to so the Inquisitor. I, He's ready. I yank the water out of Mikhail's hands. No explanation. Finished my first round of movement, and then I will dash up to cast. All right. He will... 
take it, and he will start chattily. I need a little bit of time to finish this. Hold them in place. At the end of his next turn, he'll cast it. Gideon, make me a wisdom saving throw. Once again, at disadvantage. All right, you made it. Hey, so wise. You may act as you will. I will just stay on the ground, doing my b best to suppress the urge to kill everybody here, especially Mikael. Good boy, <laughs> Gideon. I've got you. I am Sorry. going to... <laughs> Why me? Do my part and run up to um, Mythos, and I'm going to Jenny. attempt to shield bash him to the ground. At the knee! Um, so, here we go. Hi -ya. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mythos! Don't worry, I can fail this. I didn't fail this. <laughs> that halfling luck is not being very helpful right now. Mythos! Yeah. Wisdom saving throw! You're also passed. You may act as normal. Alright. I'm just going to shackle myself. Sounds good to me. Nice. On the ground. Alright. And right. use my movement to lay on the ground. Oh, okay. I would like to... have my hands on each of their chests, holding them, pinning them down. Yeah, choose one of them. Ah, okay. We're going to hold on to Gideon. Grapple check. Jenny, back up. Yeah. Do do do. Can't. I'm currently tripping Something over him. Came over me. I'm sorry. Okay. No, fail. I, I start doing just like push-ups with Thor. He's by shaking her in the air, just like up and down. Okay. Well, we're not spazzing. playing right now. Holy light of Metheria, cast away the shadows. By the shadows are broken. By the light remade. By the light remade, and the shadows are broken. And with that, Inquisitor Cast will finish his finish his incantation, and it will surge outward. The light of Metheria banishes the shadows in Mythos and Gideon. And on the altar, in a final act before the shadow dissipates, the being smiles and cracks the altar. And there is peace once more. I will scoop my brothers up into a big ol' cuddle puddle as they finally settle down. Th Thor, oh. th please let me go. <clears throat> no, no. You scared me there. I physically can't move at this point. Mm hmm, mm hmm. What was that? What? That's what I'd like to know. Man. Let me uncuff you, Mithos. They They nailed all those saves. That's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're free oh, now, God. You're free now, Mithos. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Mikael. That's crazy, I passed with disadvantage. And no blood has been spilt. It's all good. It's all okay now. Everything's passed? Everything's... Are we good now? Uh, the altar has seen better days, but it does seem that most of the trouble was past. Thank you, Inquisitor Cast. He'll nod. We will have to do quite a bit of investigating to find out what truly has transpired here. If any of you have anything to say, now is the time to say it. I, I... What could have transpired here? Who, who could have done this? Only the captain wasn't with us. You know I can sense exposure. I sensed heretical magic in the dormitory, and I traced it. And it had a tendency to explode. Uh, if you do go and search for answers in Quizdacast, I recommend being exceedingly cautious. I have no magical prowess, and so I assume that's how it took control of me so easily, but someone of your... Hmm. Stature. Might be able to ward it off more efficiently. What What do you mean you sensed magic? What magic was here? In Indeed. The dorms. What magic did you detect? It is incredibly hard to describe. Something I've never sensed before. 
Hmm. Um, Where did you sense it? A doorway, perhaps, or uh, a hole in the sky uh, above one of the beds. Take me there. Gideon, perhaps your bed monster is not so far-fetched. His, no, his called me crazy. His what? Uh, it, it takes quite it's, a bit of explanation. Well, what do you mean? Is he a bedwetter? I, Show me where he is wet. The no, 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 no. It's a, <laughs> there is a mage I, that has been following me for eight months now. I knew it. Constantly I corrupting my bed it. and causing my blankets to try to kill me. But I had already looked around for any I know, but that was magic that first before. Night. It's been weeks. This is not oh. Gideon's bed. This is mine. So they're after you too, Jenny. All right, he'll start to investigate. I can see what you mean. There is still some of this mana left. It's faint, but I can see it. Hmm. Wait, what is this? I think I recognize this. This is a find out next time on Dark Sermon. <laughs> Oh my goodness, no! no. <laughs> but, but extension, Arcadum. But uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah, Essie, Essie single-handedly earned us an extension, right? 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 <laughs> no, thumbs down. <laughs> Just for that but, ten minutes off. Oh, Good. ten points from... Ten Dark points Sermon. from Tiffin' <laughs> Ten points from Dark Sermon. Ten but, points from Dark Sermon. But, God. uh... What, what, we're gonna forget all the uh, the crucial details in in two weeks. It won't plague oh. our minds every day. I don't think you're gonna we forget anything. Won't be haunted that's by this constantly, no. Oh yes, I'm yeah. sure this cliffhanger won't be haunting your fucking dreams. So uh. so obviously we we need an extension, right? So we don't forget. I ain't telling y'all shit. No. no. Man, my armor. <laughs> my armor. Also, since he's looking at the leftover mana, can Mythos make a quick Arcana check to also find out next time what's happening? <laughs> Could I also <laughs> find out next time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I do is religion check whatever the fuck that was. Oh, man. Oh, man. Gosh. You ever just get to the point where you're like, oh, yeah, this is going to go good, and then somebody does some fucking shit, and I'm like, oh, good, now I have a lot more to write. Oh, yeah, imagine make, doing something that makes Arcadum have to skip an entire thing of content he had planned for. I, mean, I don't think it's that surprising that someone in Dark Sermon would burn the letter. It's not. It's not that they burned it. No. It's where they fucking where burned, they burned it. it. I'm sorry. And, and, you could have taken it to and, the kitchen. I was under. I, no, I was under no disillusion that they would burn the message, that they would destroy it or suppress the knowledge. I expected mm -hmm. that to go to the altar of their deity and burn it there. It's just like, okay. That's the closest thing. Also, <laughs> the also, way. also, this wasn't all us. This was, this was some Marlo. That's, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's the other thing, too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fingers in this pie. There's, there's a, a lot, lot of fingers. fingers. There, there's a lot I of I don't like that phrase. There's a lot of fingers in this pie, and nobody washed their hands. Nobody. No. Especially oh. not Marlo. Especially <laughs> not Marlo. Oh, that's Mario. It's covered in he little didn't bits use of his hands either. It's covered yeah, with little Mario, bits of Yeah, Marlo scratched his butt and then stuck his fingers in the pie. And, so, and Luke, nothing happened yet. 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 What, what do you it's mean coming. nothing happened yet? Well, was that last honest. little bit that we just did a nothing to you? Uh, listen, no, no, we all no, get to go to sleep. He's in chat. He's in chat being like, nothing happened though. Like, yet. I it's will coming. blame you. Listen, we all we all get to go to sleep, so who knows what plagues our sleep? Uh, can we pronounce yeah. the storm curse and sleep somewhere else? Ah, uh, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. This is actually my favorite uh, Marlo fan art so far. <laughs> Watcher oh M. Changing beds. Watcher M. <laughs> my goodness. Watcher M. I keep telling y'all, there's a fucking mage out there <laughs> messing with our beds. It's in our to kill us. I'm sorry I didn't believe you, Mr. Gideon. I thought you were just... Yeah, that's that's another thing. Being like, silly, Gideon, Gideon's gaslight of himself <laughs> has now been like confirmed, and it's it's so dumb. It's <laughs> oh man. Alrighty, well, Wait. that's a solid set right there. Arcadum, look yeah. up. There was a note. Look up. What? Where? Oh, oh there's one. Oh, missing yes. out oh, some oh, Billy oh, G. Oh yes. Oh yes. Billy's art. Very good. Yes, Billy's art. Billy. Jojo Thorne. Good old Billy. Yeah. Right 
But old Billy finally came through. But man, uh, man. Our disguises have to wait even more now. He did a great job on that star. He did. He really mm -hmm. did. Flower and everything. He, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Marlo. Look into Marlo's eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peeping. Man. He's peeping. Wow. Well, look into Marlo's eyes, looking into Jenny's eyes. <laughs> Essie and I are gonna need some ice cream Looks now. Looks into Thorn's dead eyes. Great. Oh, oh, right. All right. And, and, uh, and I think that will be where I'll call the session. Thank you guys so much for watching. Very good. Thanks for playing. Thanks for um, all the subs, all the support, follows, all that good stuff. So, Hot Tub Stream is coming up soon. I think oh. I may have found a place to do it. Uh, may not have. I'm still working out all the details. I do plan on doing it soon, though. Um, so, yeah. if that Daniel, if that Daniel guy's still in here, the the incredible amount of subs you gifted are not going to waste. Yes, and then the next <laughs> thing is definitely you're getting your nails dipped and uh, you know put into acrylics, right? I I don't even no. know what that actually. Whatever. I oh. no, probably not. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> They can we'll all see. be little Pikachus, Arcadum. All right. I will see you guys next time. Next time. Bye. Bye.